Supermodel Tyra Banks decided to do a uh, young adult novel, kinda Hunger Games Harry Potter-esque, using a self-insert of herself that goes to model land, uh, which is a magical school for models. Lots of crazy stuff happens in it. She had a, a theme song. Just recently I discovered that Tyra Banks uh, has put up a website now for uh, the real model land. <laughs> Tyra Banks would like to create, uh, according to the website, it is not a theme park. It is not a theme park. But this is what initially this was pitched as when I saw it in the news forever ago. She wanted to, to do a model land theme park. But now it appears to just be like photo shoots and like it's just like an expensive thing people can pay to go to and like be pampered and um, the, the site includes things like Model Land Elixir and ar Artisan Truffles. She did a whole finale for one season of uh, America's Next Top Model that <laughs> was uh, reenacting scenes from this book. <laughs> it was pretty hilarious getting all of the girls to say like, I'm Tukey. <laughs> I'm Tukey. I'm Tukey. I'm Tukey. I'm Tukey. This thing is like, it's goblet of fire length. It's so, it's so long. Kind of blurry and blown up. Not a very good graphic. Model land. Beauty is in the smize of the beholder. Oh my God, oh my God, look. She's, <laughs> she's done like a Lord of the Rings kind of <laughs> illustration. <laughs> like the, the map of Mordor. <laughs> Tyra invested five years in conceiving and writing Model Land. I have been working on something for the past four to five years. It is my very first novel. It's called Model Land. Her first book of fiction, and only, I should note, this, uh, <laughs> it's been quite some time. This was meant to be a trilogy, I believe, uh, has not written a sequel, but has created a theme park sequel. Tookie de la Creme isn't expecting an invitation. Model Land, the exclusive, mysterious place on top of the mountain, never dares to make an appearance in her dreams before she can blink her mis her mismatched eyes. <laughs> like a Raven dementia way. <laughs> If she survives the beastly catwalk corridor and terrifying thigh high boot camp, <laughs> I'm just in the jacket! I'm just in the jacket! The way she writes is like. Like. It's like the way she talks. It's the, it's the try too hard, like, hello, fellow kids! How do you do, fellow teens? Now we begin the actual. Okay, the, the beginning of this book. You're obsessed with being chosen. Everyone is. The land you thirst for has loomed at the top of the mountain in... Metopia? Metopia? A place that's all about Tyra Banks. And she calls it Metopia. It's spelled M-E-topia. I don't think this is supposed to be satire. Like, Tyra Banks legit, like, she thought this was gonna be Harry Potter. You lust to go to the land to become one of the only famous people in the world. You ache to be a 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't know how to pronounce this. This is how she has spelled it. The number seven, no space, capital S, Evan. All these references, by the way. The butter pecan gelato. There's something later about, like, blood oranges. The air smells like blood oranges. This is all just because they're things Tyra Banks likes. This is the only reason. There's no narrative purpose other than Tyra Banks likes it, and this is Tyra Banks' dream land in her head. Nevertheless, you and every young girl in the world vie for an opportunity on the Day of Discovery. There's lots of random capitalizations. Which is grander than every global holiday combined. This is bigger than Christmas! The land sends seven talismans called Smizes into the world. Seven talismans called Smizes. They're Smize talismans. These Smizes, which boost your odds of being chosen by 91%, are propelled through the world's waterways. What? <laughs> propelled through the waterway, like the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog rings come through water for some reason. Naturally, the week before the day of discovery, bathing, showering, pool use, and even sewer diving increase, threatening a drought. What is turning into Waterworld? They gotta have those smizes! You ignore the slim odds and disregard the warnings you've heard since birth. Since birth they have warned them of the model end. <laughs> it's like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory golden ticket 
Like the rumor that the school often takes inhumane and irreversible disciplinary action. Or that certain disposable civilian girls are brought to the land to be tortured and then killed, used as human sacrifices for ungodly experiments in animalistic rituals. How can model land continue to exist? Those in the land bathe in civilian blood to maintain the breathtaking beauty. It's like a uh, Countess Bathory. Goodness great shoes! Excuse me, that's... <laughs> Goodness great shoes. Chapter one. I don't know how to say... Okay, it's Tookie but spelled stupid. How? With the the spaces and the, they don't take... They don't put the I. It's too okay. <laughs> this is like too fast, too furious. You stick things in numbers and spaces and whatever. I don't know. I feel like I'm joining a cult. The girl whose face not even the meanest person you know would describe as yuck, but you'd never in a million, no, a trillion years, describe as alluring either. The girls whose eyes are three centimeters too far apart and whose mouth is four centimeters too wide. My breasts are just too big, but not small enough, not big, what, I just, I'm just too, I'm not ugly enough and not pretty enough. The girl whose body is a contradiction of itself. This is paragraph upon paragraph of Tyra just describing herself. A slightly hunched back from years of poor posture, one must presume. See, this is- she loves the hunches on Top Model. Like, she's like, yeah, this is the- oh, yeah. The girl with the humongous punch bowl sized head, with a forehead that goes on and on and on, making her look like the weight of her cranium will topple her over and break her into a thousand pieces. She's mega mind. You heard me right. She has one green eye and one brown one. All of these things, she, she keeps saying all of these things like they're like, ooh, uggo, weird, people don't like that stuff. When this is like, people like, they're like, ooh, two different colored eyes, that's great. These are like sought after things. And it's like, ugh, can you imagine? But these things will be her, will be what's unique about her. That's what makes her a model. <laughs> For as unusual looking as she was, Tookie was a forget a girl. One of the most forgettable girls in the entire world. But maybe not for long. I feel like if she had a, a, a head so big you thought she was going to topple over and shatter, you'd remember. You know, uh, Dan Aykroyd has mismatched eyes. Maybe he is also a forget a girl until Model Land um, discovers his beauty. Tookie de la Creme was splayed on her back on the hallway floor of her school. As Tookie waited, she lifted her face a to her face a cold canister of whipped cream, inserting the nozzle straight into her mouth. This is going into her love of whipped cream. Another squirt landed in her hair. Good God. She then licked her tiny baby fingers from thumb to pinky and prepared for the next squirt. I'm scared. I'm scared. An oily belch followed, sending a thick cloud of greenish smoke through the vents. The administration had done very little in the way of renovation to convert the safety code deficient building into a proper institute of learning. The school let out belches and eruptions all day and leaked fumes from every crevice. The building farts. The building farts, guys. There's no other way to say it. The building farts. This can't be what factories are like, right? They don't like fart. Factories don't fart through the... Especially if you're not even, like, producing anything anymore. That doesn't make any sense. It, like, maybe from, like, the machinery. But why would it... <laughs> why would the building just fart? Ugh, Ariella Bertona. <laughs> Ariella Bertona wailed, fanning the odors from her face. Zarpessa. Zarpessa says she's spending 50,000 on her prep. It was yet another day when no one, not a single person, looked down on the floor and cried, oh, check out that girl down there. Are they, is she just laying there while they like go around her or are they stomping on? Like this is on her. Tookie sighed and reached for a small, thick yellow book wedged under her lower back. It wasn't just any regular yellow, it was piss yellow. Just kidding. Over the I in her name, Tookie added a tiny FG for her forget a girl. Oh my god, that's what that is? Instead of like a smiley or a heart, she puts FG as like the, <laughs> the dot on the eye. This is how it's written in this book. <laughs> Every color represented a different language. Flamingo pink for Gaudi An, Cabernet grape for Tre Jolie, Mandarin orange for Bay Jingle, and Skyscraper gray for 
Colorian, the language spoken in the distant land of Sans Color. What is this word salad? There's there's words stuck together that shouldn't be stuck together. What is that? Bay Jingle is one word. Bay Jingle. Colorian. It's just color. Colorian. Whatever. Sans Color. Is it supposed to be funny? Is it supposed to be satire? By the age of 11, Tookie knew 28 languages. Oh, stupid, forget a girl with her multiple languages and her different colored eyes and her left-handedness. All these things are oh, relatable. The relatable is what I would describe this book as. And then she heard the bow-legged footsteps she'd been waiting for. She heard the bow-legged footsteps and the spurs. Patwing, patwing, patwing. There was only one person at B3 who had spoken to Tookie besides Miracle. Class president. Theophilus Lovelaces. <laughs> a new contender approaches. I wish that I could write a book this good. A year ago, Tookie had taken a real spill, tumbling down the narrow spiral sta staircase in the cafeteria. This sounds hilarious. But then a figure in a pinstripe jacket had appeared. Tookie's vision was all blurry, but she could make out a small round button on the figure's lapel. Vote for love. But that didn't stop her from noticing his imperfectly perfect features. Sun-kissed, tightly curled hair, a left cheekbone that was sharper and more defined than the right. <laughs> Why would you notice that? After a few moments of Tookie lying there just staring, Theophilus stepped back, an apologetic look on his face. Okay, um, sorry. And then he turned around and left. They hadn't talked since. Wow, what a great interaction this was. Albert Talbert. I think Albert Talbert might be my favorite new entry in this. A filled field hockey stick grazed her abdomen and sent the button flying across the hall. Oh my god. She scanned the floor for the button. Where is it? Where is it? Tookie cried out in pain as if the button were her own tender skin. That's the creepiest way she could have said that. A shiny black boot kicked the button and sent it sailing through the stale cafeteria air right into a trash can. Finally, her fingers curled around the button and she pulled it out with glee. I remember this from the top model reenactment. They had um, Laura, I believe, was the model who was digging through the trash can. And they were like, we don't want this to feel comedic. That was their complaint about her acting. They thought she was too comedic with it. So they are absolutely being serious about this. <laughs> Okay, Laura frightened me in the trash <laughs> to the point that it was, it got really comedic. Tookie almost threw the button back into the trash before her eyes focused again, and she saw that it was now, now spelled its own version of her. Tookie. <laughs> How much damage did, there's no way this happened to this button, that all of these, like, letters would just be rubbed off from people stepping on it. This makes no sense. Her hand-me-up shoes, which were two sizes too small. But her heart grew three sizes that day. Can you really say love laces? Like, it just add an S to it and then it's fine? Like, Linda Lovelace is the lady from Deep Throat, isn't it? <laughs> she had imagined it so many times. She and Theophilus alone together in the dry Peppertown forest. Their lips moving closer, closer, closer. And finally touching to give Chucky her first and only kiss. Zerpessa would be forgotten. Tookie would be remembered. I was rooting for you, Tookie. We were all rooting for you. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Chapter 2. Exodus. Screech. I know that character from Saved by the Bell. Principal Robbie Cosby. Oh no, Principal Cosby, no! Tyra, you can't call him Principal Cosby. All of the lockers had been taken. Left to fend for herself, Tookie improvised with the dumbwaiter. So she just wouldn't have one? Because everyone called dibs? This just sounds like a shitty school. Beside the usual piles of textbooks and novels, Tookie had installed a miniature, fully stocked cooler. There were buttermilk biscuits, plastic containers of sausage, gravy, vanilla sandwich cookies, every condiment from spicy ketchup to Dijon mustard to mesquite honey and chipotle barbecue sauces. Her favorites. All right, Tyra Banks has never seen a real cooler or locker in her life. But I'm glad we know a list of Tyra's favorite foods. <laughs> the mayor of Metopia, the honorable Devin Rump the sixth. Why is every name dumber than the last? Rump has launched an aggressive campaign to arrest scalpers who are selling tickets to VIP sections. 
that's what's gonna happen when the model land theme park opens up there's gonna be a bunch of scalpers like they're gonna sell you a fantasy experience and then you're gonna end up arrested for buying illegal tickets and then um the entire banks is gonna stomp on you like you're you're tookie de la creme laying on the floor i'm making it my personal mission declared mayor rump to protect every young girl's un inalienable right i imagine he's got like a big mustache not every young girl's inalienable right tookie thought as she pushed through the school's double doors oh it's their right to model she's being oppressed Metopia was split into four quadrants, each with its own weather system. Wow. There was frigid Shivera. Oh, because they shiver? Shivera? Come on, Tyra. Are you 12? As soon as Tookie stepped out of the B3's double doors, her eyes squinted almost closed from the searing sun. <laughs> Blazing hellscape. <laughs> But the fashion capitals uh, gotta make the bobbles and beads while we're scorching to death in Tank Girl World. Uh. Uh. So there's like the scorching sun, but a shit ton of water that they can find all their smize talismans in. This makes sense. And you didn't dare touch the sidewalk in Pepper Town. It would burn your fingerprints off. What a what a what a weird metaphor. It'll burn your fingerprints off. Like why are you touching it with your hands anyway? Are you walking on your hands? A fair-skinned eggplant-shaped woman stepped out of a tow ring factory. They, they, they can't possibly need that many tow rings. Apparently, a famous wealthy Baroness had run a Yonzi scheme of sorts, investing people's money unwisely and bankrupting them all. Tyra knows nothing about schemes of sorts. Uh, certainly not um, MLM schemes. Never a thought that entered her mind. <laughs> Sign me up! Oh, yeah. Some of the fog at the very top of the mountain had parted, revealing the top tips of what they all knew was a bright eye shining in the sky. Sauron, no! The Eye of Sauron is watching Tyra de la Creme. Is this it? Dominique shrieked. Is it happening? So it's literally like like a Mount Olympus. <laughs> People are like, are we going to model land, please? Where the hell is CL? The messages puzzled Tookie. They referred to CL. Uh, this is spelled C, the little squiggly line L, by the way, whose name was pronounced CL. Oh, thank you for telling telling us the one word they decide they need to say how to pronounce. You got to figure out number seven seven yourself. But this one, several children stood on the sidewalk, their eyes hollow, their hair cut short, their bodies swimming in workers' uniforms. There's child labor in this. These are just beauty tainers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> These were the factory dependents, children sometimes even younger than Tookie, whose parents could no longer or chose not to care for them. Oh, so they're orphans. They're little uh, Dickensian orphans working at the accessory factories. As you do, tale as old as time. Nestled in the top branches was a tree cottage of sorts, with piles and piles of clothes inside. Ah, uh, see, I saw this in the, uh, the Star Wars holiday special. They're all living in trees. Uh, like, uh, like Wookiees or Ewoks. So she's got like a little Keebler elf friend is what it is. A little Keebler elf that, that lives in a tree, cobbles shoes, steals outfits. <laughs> is anyone with you? Lizzie whispered, her left hand twitching. She's, uh, she's, I see her as like a little goblin, a little tree goblin. Lizzie's skin was oddly smooth, nothing like its normal acne-prone, pockmarked, sunburned state. <laughs> she thinks a lot of her friend. But Zarpessa is an heir to the... Zariano Peanut Empire! Peanut Empire! Peanut Empire! She's the nuttiest peanut empire heiress! <laughs> you think she knows Baby Nut personally? <laughs> I can't believe it! Tookie shook her head. How long do you think she's been digging through trash? You know what? You were just digging through trash the chapter before, Tookie. You cannot, you cannot judge her. You cannot judge her for this. Tell them to stop, Lizzie pleaded in a strange, garbled voice. She always say it won't hurt, but it does. What the fuck is happening? Blood flowed from the fresh, fresh slice in her skin. Now we're going into self-harm? I don't think this book should have any of these things in it. They shouldn't be talking about... They shouldn't go into these darker subjects. I don't think Tyra understands how to do them tactfully. The Melancholia Ward, she thought. That had to be where Lizzie had gone. Are they in the Middle Ages? 
The melancholy award. She's suffering from melancholy. The Shivera Hospital kept no records, as though it didn't exist. But everyone knows about it. But it didn't exist. And we own the factories, not just working them, Lizzie added. Our workers would be part owners, too, and we treat them with respect, not like the workers are treated here. <laughs> so Tyra is thinking much like her, um, like her beauty tainment business, that this is going to be a fair working factory. Everyone's going to have a share, and it's going to be great. <laughs> They're not going to take advantage of any of these poor orphans that they put to work. And Theophilus would be our mayor, Tookie Swoon. You don't have a mayor of a factory. Excuse me. The mayor of the factory. T Tyra thinks factories have mayors. They think there's mayor of the whipped cream factories. The mayor. Factory mayor. And we'd give our leftover lunches to Zarpessa. She waited outside every night in the cold ocean air for a staff scraps, Lizzie said with a devilish grin. So they just don't like her because she's popular. They don't like her because she's popular, so they're going to make fun of her for, like, having no money and being homeless. This is really bitchy. Think about it. For real this time. I love you, Chucky. Peace. I added that. Wow, awful. That was, uh, that was a terrible chapter. I hated it. Uh, a lot. Chapter 3. Da-ta! 3434 Pepper Lane, the home of Tookie de la Creme. She lives at Pepper Lane in Peppertown, wishing she didn't have to cross the threshold, but knowing she had nowhere else to go. This was her home. Oh good, so we're going from the self-harm to the abuse angle. She opened the door and tripped again, first over a cardboard box that said Creamy de la Creme on the shipping la label. Is that her mom, Creamy de la Creme? No! Brown spot, her voice called again. Ah, another brown spot, clunk. Ah, out, damn spot, out, I say. She's Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Toki, they can see your dirty pillows. Her other arm held Bellissima, a l <laughs> Fuck. I remember this from the, uh, the top model, um, finale. They had this stuff about this baby doll. Her mom's obsessed with a baby doll. She carries this baby doll around. Thick makeup clumped heavily in permanent lines on and around her mouth. Oh, I feel that. Can those baby fingers of yours dig out a gherkin for me? I'm starving. I don't like the baby fingers description. Mrs. De La Creme suddenly started to applaud and Tookie's stomach dropped. She knew that he stopped doing that. <laughs> Even though she was 13 and Tookie was 15, she was more womanly than Tookie in every way. She'd even develop faster, getting her period earlier that year. Oh, miracle, miracle, miracle. Always getting your period first. Tookie still hadn't gotten hers yet. Oh, get, get ready for that part of model land. And what if I told you? Every hallway is a runway, not a dance hall. What you need to be doing is practicing your walk. Oh, you remember in uh, Tyra Banks' beautiful music video, as you might recall from uh, America's Next Top Model, uh, one of the Boys in the House seasons. <laughs> For her uh, pyramid scheme, they did a commercial, <laughs> uh, and part of it was work the hallway like a runway, work the hallway like a runway. In the doorway stood Mr. De La Creme. He closed his left eye, which was made of glass, an unfortunate souvenir of an acrobatic performance gone awry many years ago when he was the incredible Chris Creme Crobot, and not just Christopher De La Creme. Describing everyone, you could say this is like an OS, like original character do not steal kind of situation. Like, I'm the most important girl in the room, member. Her fi voice and face were so adorable that the tension was momentarily forgotten. I'm imagining like the little girl from Cats Don't Dance, <laughs> Darla Dimple. Tookie popped another baby gherkin into her mouth, feeling as irrelevant as the bananas in the trash can. Can you stop saying the word baby in this book? Baby gherkin. I don't like it. Quit infantilizing the, the gherkins. In which second year students travel to strip town? Strip town! Strip town! It's just called Strip Town! Tyra Banks! I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! Tookie carefully picked up the bubble with her hands, and then before her eyes, the bubble flattened itself and transformed into a cellophane-thin, golden cat's-eye sunglasses without the frames! Woo! <laughs> Tookie looked from her sister Miracle to the true miracle that had taken shape in her hands. A smize! Chapter 4. 91% Chance. The smize was made up of ornate eyeshadow-like flourishes and strokes of taxi cab, Dijon, baby chick, banana, and lemonade yellow. Shut up! It's just- it's just this with the- <laughs> Shut up! It's just- it's just- 
pea. Pea color, that's what I call it. Tookie hesitated, then stretched out her arms, feeling a little sad to part with the beautiful membrane. Membrane! 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 So it's really just supposed to be this eye thing. It's like literally a smize is just an eye. What the hell is smize? Smize is smiling with your eyes. Lord, something's tired of this again. Like, I know smize means smiling with your eyes, but I didn't think it was literally just like an eye that comes out of a sink. Which we are... Who's reading it now? We're going to be rich! Brian yelled. Is he the brother? Is that a bro- Do they have a brother? I thought he was a friend. But he said we're. And to get my baby gherkins out of the jar for me while she's walking. You know my gherkins calm me down when I'm nervous. No more baby gherkins! I'm on my periodical right now. It makes me forgetful. It's period, not periodical, Tukey growled. And remember, guys, Tuki has not yet had her period at, I think, 15, and she's very jealous that Miracle has already, has already gotten a visit from Mother Nature. <laughs> it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. How do you know? You haven't even gotten yours yet. Miracle never resisted the urge to remind her that she had gotten her period already, even though she was two years younger. <laughs> This is stupid. A stupid fight. If you think it's butter, but it's not, it's chiffon. I'm just gonna read some of the reviews for this book. Publishers Weekly considered the book overlong, campy and warped, and a non-stop barrage of surrealism and wackiness, but conceded that it could serve as a guilty pleasure. The Stony Book Press praised Banks' approach of allegorically describing the process by which contestants are selected to, pe to appear on America's Next Top Model, but criticized the book's inner conflict of purpose <laughs> and described it as tacky, predictable, and superficial, and exhausting to read, <laughs> while the Georgia Strait called it a befuddling piece of drecketude. <laughs> and evidence that Banks is certifiably batty. Bitch, that is the publication, uh, Bitch noted that although Modeland promotes self-esteem and confidence in girls, it is less than empowering since it is all to a depressing consumerist end, calling it a night nonsensical, nightmarish acid trip that seemed like it would never end, and with more made-up words and terms than a Klingon translation of a Dr. Seuss book, and emphasizing that it stops being funny when you realize just how long it is. <laughs> she wrote on her website, talking about the idea for the book, I'm always dreaming up ideas, like when the words modeling boarding school floated into my head while I was driving on the FDR highway in Manhattan. I wrote them down in a little notepad and five years, thousands of pages and dozens of writing getaways later. Five years. I finally get to call myself the author of Model Lambs. <laughs> She just was driving down the road, and she's like, why are models super? Harry Potter, Model Land, boarding school. Chapter 5. Smacking into Mirrors. A few minutes later, Tuki stood in the doorway of the bedroom she shared with Miracle. Are they gonna get to Model Land anytime soon? Ample cupped bras that certainly didn't belong to Tuki were draped across Tuki's carefully made bed, and torn out pages from Model Land magazines were scattered across the floor like leaves that had fallen from a fashion tree. Oh my god, I'm in love with this sentence. <laughs> you know what? In Tyra's dreams, there are really Model Land magazines. She thinks it, once this once this theme park takes off. She's gonna have Model Land Magazine come out. It's gonna be great. She's gonna sell her makeup. There's gonna be more pyramid schemes. It's all gonna be great. The image of Zarpessa and Theophilus kissing in the hall flashed in her mind. You know, for a moment. See, I'm becoming numb to Tuki, right? To Tuki de la Creme and Miracle is like, it's spelled weird, but like I've heard of people called Miracle before. So I've, be I've become kind of numb to this. Um, but then once they get into the school names, all of a sudden, all of a sudden I remember Zarpessa and Theophilus are things. <laughs> Brian's a normal ass name. He's the weirdo in Model Land universe. Like he's named Brian and everyone else is some like weird ass name. <laughs> They're like Brian. <laughs> Kinda name is Brian. Theophilus. Oh Theophilus. Tuki swooned. She closed her eyes and licked her lips. She's like a she's like a she's an incel is what she is. Like she thinks she deserves Theophilus because she just cause she wants him, cause like nobody likes nice girls, you know? She's been friend-zoned. Not even friend-zoned, forget-a-zoned. She imagined Theophilus right in front of her. She leaned toward him, her eyes closed, her lips caressing the air. 
What a weirdo. We can call our boy... <laughs> no! We can call our boy Tuki Tukophilus and our girl Thuddy? Thuddy? We could call our boy Tukophilus and our girl Thuddy. It's like, it's Tuvix level naming, you know? Like, but naming the kids their couple portmanteaus. Good God, why are we supposed to like this protagonist? Miracle's eyes glimmered. Are you making in with yourself? She, Tyra does not know how to write stupid people. It doesn't make Miracle seem dumb. Miracle ain't real. It's just, it's dumb. She giggled a little as she left the room, managing to drop a cardigan sweater, a tap shoe, and several gum wrappers on Tukey's side as she left. She's like, uh, she's like pig pen, just like clothes and stuff are just flying off of her. Why is there just a random M? I don't recall this being part of the formatting. They've changed it. I don't understand. There's a random M up here for some reason. I don't... I don't know why that's there. Balanced on one hand in the center of the living room's tattered carpet was her father, clad in a colorful unitard. His waist twisted in the air. His legs were bent at an awkward angle. His muscles strained and shook. An empty bottle of tater mash, a colorless distil distilled beverage imported from Kremlingrad. Kremlingrad! Kremlingrad. Kremlingrad. Can we... Is tater mash a thing? I could, I could find out. Let's look it up. Tater mash. I thought it, she's just talking about mashed potatoes. It's the name of some custom tater mash oil cloth? Embroidery and gifts? Kremlingrad. Guys, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I can't... I don't know how I'm gonna recover from this. When she was much younger, she'd assisted her father during many of his acrobatic practices. She could still remember that day in almost perfect detail, and the sharp five-foot swords that pointed skyward all along the perimeter of the stage. Contortionists who had backflipped into the deep, hot, pink-dyed swimming pools full of crocodiles. Full of crocodiles! She just always has to add, like, two or three more unnecessary details. I kind of love it, though. It's very good. However, right as Tukey's father had reached the seven-story landing on the the stage, Mrs. De La Creme pulled out her mirror to add a bit of wrinkle redux to her to her tanned and hideously lined face. Oh no! I want to look my best when the camera's all turned to me after his feet is done, she murmured. But the mirror caught a beam of light that shone right into Chris Creme Crobat's eyes, momentarily blinding him. In a panic, he lost his footing and fell seven stories! <laughs> He tucked his body and landed smoothly on his upper back, propelling himself forward into a smooth tumble. Chris Creme Crobat then arched upward and to stand from his backbend and face his adoring, applauding, whistling, screaming fans. Ever the devoted showman, he thrust himself forward into a deep bow, impaling his eye on one of the five-foot swords on the perimeter of the stage. What is going on? What is going on in this book? What is happening? There's so many twists and turns in this story. There's so much. There's so. Oh my god. You know what? She swerved on me. T Tyra swerved on me because I didn't know where this was going. All right. So let's break this down. This is a review. All right. So we need to cr we need to critique this as um as journalistic critics. Uh, literary critics uh, of this uh, of this wonderful book. Uh, so, okay, during this scene, um, <laughs> her father's an acrobat. Her father's an acrobat, and she's do he's doing a feat that no one's ever done before. While well, these girls are are doing contortionist stuff into pink pools full of crocodiles or whatever, and he's gonna do this flip over like seven stories or something. But just as he's gonna do it, his the, his wife is like, I gotta put on this wrinkle cream with my mirror so that I look good on camera, and then <laughs> and then the light reflects and then blinds him, and then he goes, ah, but he's so nimble like a cat, like this, like Catwoman, he just like flips himself around and like, nah, nah. but then... So every, everything's cool, right? But his hubris, his hubris is what got him. His wife actually had nothing to do with this. He bows and isn't paying attention and impales his own eye on a sword. <laughs> it feels like, it feels like a weird ass fanfic for something that doesn't exist. Hubris. It's always what gets him. 
Oh, damn it. it! Isn't that always the way? Okay, so this part, I'm assuming, intended to be funny. A bit of uh, black humor on, uh, on Tyra's part, and yet... Like, I mean, it's not good, though, right? It's not clever. It's... why... <laughs> She's having, like, nightmares about this, about the day her dad stupidly impaled himself while, while his wife was was um, looking at herself in the mirror uh, unrelatedly. Pools of her father's blood splattered the stage floor, along with pieces of flesh? What? What is he doing? Is he like, ah, I can't get loose. Let me just keep doing it. Oh, let me grab it. Oh, my hand. Oh, like, <laughs> how is this going so bad? This went downhill fast. <laughs> and there, staring up at her, was her father's eye disembodied, lifeless on the stage floor, gazing at Tookie accusingly as if asking, why? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the scene in Evil Dead 2. They like pop the eye out of the, out of the deadite's face and then it lies into her mouth. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to model land yet. She didn't have anyone reenact this on the um, the top model episode about this. This was um, this was a surprise. <laughs> to the point that it was it got really comedic. Lots of uh, lots of mixed feelings about that chapter. That was the end of chapter five. Some of this is pretty rotten. I gotta be honest with you. Some of this is pretty rotten. Chapter six. Stunning, statuesque, strobotronic stars with stupefying stratospheric struts. Stunning statue. It's the Buffy font. That's what was getting me. It's the Buffy font, right? Am I wrong? The 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 chapter titles is in the Buffy font. This is the point of view of whoever the hell this narrator is. The names of these sacred souls begin with I and end with Ella. And guess what? We're just about to get a peek at a few of them. S seven seven. To be exact. I'm moving to Kremlingrad. Jeremy Jerk, <laughs> the most lauded clothing artiste in the world. He refused to design any apparel but dresses. Jeremy Jerk, I think I have a new favorite. Jeremy Jerk. <laughs> what has happened so far in this book, though? She's laid on a floor, she's found a smize, and now they're looking for a dress. This is all that's happened. Normal mothers helping their normal single color eyed daughters. <laughs> Tukey thirsted for a drink of it. Enough with the two different colored eyes! The rack let out an ear-splitting screech as Mrs. De La Creme threw a score of hangers to the floor. No wire hangers! Beguiled by her hypnotizing matching green eyes. Matching green eyes! Enough! Maybe she'll self-impale one of her one of her mismatched eyes and then she'll just have one single colored eye. Then she noticed someone familiar sitting on a bench only a few feet away from the mall's entrance. A man she'd seen on her walks home from school. He mumbled softly to himself, just like he always did, and held onto the laces of an enormous battered wingtip shoe slung over his shoulder. That shoe was why Tukey had given him a secret nickname. Wingtip. You don't need dumb nicknames. Everyone's already got dumb real names. Oh my god, Tukey whispered. Golden clouds could mean only one thing. Golden showers. <laughs> Hovering above the... Mountain was an illuminated eye with its smize flourishes made up of millions of birds from a myriad of species. I see I have your attention, boomed a familiar Gaudian accented voice. I don't know what Gaudi is supposed to be in her world. Each and every girl on your planet has a chance to be one of the enlightened. Could it be you? On your planet, are they aliens? Each and every girl on the planet has a chance to be one of the enlightened. Feast your eyes upon Evangelinda. Evangelinda, the Peladonna said over the cheering crowd. Evangelinda. Stupid. It's all stupid. Jeremy Jerk. Stupid. Evangelinda's power. Chameleone. What is. What? Okay, they have powers, I, I guess. And I don't know what this word is supposed to be. It's some made up word, I'm assuming, like chameleon, like she can, you know, blend in all sorts of fashions or whatever. She's a shapeshifter! She's a shapeshifter! You don't have to call it chameleon, eh? she just shapeshifts. It's a, you don't have to come up with stupid words. If I had her, I'd have a different girl every night, a man next to Tukey cried. I could stop cheating! What the fuck? What? <laughs> Who 
is this guy? Wait, I have a lot of questions about this man. Simone's power, multiplicity. Each Simone made a unique pose before being sucked back into the original. Oh my god, we're gonna get seven of these descriptions. Seven of these descriptions. It takes five years to read this. <laughs> Bev Joe's power, 30 never. When Bev Joe ages to 29, she will begin her next year looking again like she is 17 until she reaches 29 again. That cycle will continue until she perishes. I remember this from Top Model. They had one season where she decided she was gonna give them all superhero nicknames with her um her great character Super Smize. <laughs> And she named one of them 30 Never, which means that she was gonna make her wear pigtails all the time and like treat her like a baby. Her power? Excite to buy! The ability to sell! She's just using a challenge from, from Top Model to name these... This is fucking bullshit. I need it now! Oh, she can control minds to buy things? This is insidious! Her power? Seduction! Oh, fuck. Okay, here's how she spells seduction. S-E-D-U-K-S-H-E-E-O-N. Seduction. I'm ready to sin with Sendisi right here, right now, one of them yelled. Who is this for? Who? Who is this for? Who is this for? Is there top model hopefuls that read this and they liked it? Like, what? Who? Are there Model Land fans? One paragraph starts with, uh, with Belladonna talking and then the guy talking is part of the same paragraph and then another paragraph starts with belladonna again you would need it should have been spaced out you don't you don't have two people talk in the same paragraph all right it feels dumb reading this her power is six sensa s-i-x-x -X, no space capital s e-n-s-a a remarkable supernatural six sense thank you for explaining it i'm incredibly stupid oh sorry i need to uh, read it in the in the belladonna voice katucha can see into the future of fashion did i mention that katucha has enhanced sight hearing touch taste and smell did they have to add that because it's like well this isn't that impressive that she can just see what trends are happening or teleportaling it's just turning into into Dr. Evil. Why do you talk to yourself? Tuki blurted out, then clapped her hand over her mouth, fearing she'd been rude. Oh, Tuki rude? Wingtip didn't look bothered. Crazy? Ha, huh, my mother says you're crazy. Oh, does she now? Well, maybe you should listen to your mother. Nah, I think you're more sad than crazy. What is this conversation? Because it hurts. What hurts? Everything. I can relate to that. What it, I don't know what this is, but this- I expect um, him, him to kidnap her or like flash her or something. Go for your destiny, girl. Dream big. Take it from a sad and crazy man who talks to himself. Everyone's entitled to a dream, you know? Even you. He rose, slung the shoe onto his back, and gave her a nod. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> That's a threat. And then he slipped through the crowd, the old wingtip shoe bouncing against his back. Tookie watched him for a moment, awestruck. Ah, the wise old wingtip. <laughs> ah. This was a New York Times best-selling book, and it was in the uh, the children's chapter book section. We are on chapter seven, X O two. Tookie's mother groped for the doll. Christopher, don't you dare hurt her! Are we gonna get to Model Land anytime in this Model Land book? All it is, it's just, it's just like dysfunctional family in shopping world. Sometimes I think you wish that sword had killed me so that you could continue your life with her father. Oh, the twist! The twist! I'm gonna place bets that uh, Wingtip is her biological father. She has no father. She is made by midichlorians. Christopher, you have gone crazy! It just starts turning into Starscream or something at this point, my voice. You sure are breaking your number one rule, because you're making a hell of a lot of eye contact with a crazy person right now, aren't you? Tuki's mother, sh her number one rule is don't make eye contact with a crazy person? Out of all the rules this, like, this, this mommy dearest-esque <laughs> mother has, it's don't make eye contact with a crazy person. He removed a yellow toothbrush, its bristles worn and bent from his pocket, and waved, in waved it in front of his wife's face. Tuki squinted and realized it was hers. 
He's gonna do the DNA test, and then Tyra's gonna find out her heritage and uh, take up the ending of a whole Top Model episode. You are 79% African and 14% from Great Britain. Am I? Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and once I find that out, I'm sending Tuki away. I don't want her in this house anymore. I'm sending her to the factories. Oh, she's going to the orphan factories. Oh my god. She thinks she's gonna become a poor person. And we know what Tuki thinks of poor people. I can't believe Tuki's father had this heel turn. She was so nice to him after he impaled himself uh, when he was just feeling himself at that, uh, at that um, acrobatic thing. She paused in the doorway to glance at Miracle, who was sleeping soundly, letting out a giggle snore here and there. This was what Wingtip was talking about. This was her dreaming big. Everything sounds stupid in this book, doesn't it? The smize rested gently in her palm. It glittered and hummed. Oh, it's like a, a little Quidditch. The snitch. <laughs> That's what it's called, right? A snitch? It sounds fake, right? That it's called a snitch? What a stupid name. Harry Potter could be stupid, too. <laughs> He walked Yuki toward the vehicle and shoved her into the back of the car as one might shove a bread pan of bread into the oven. <laughs> a sound that sent tremors through Tuki's limbs. A sound Tuki would never forget as long as she lived. <coughs> Chapter 8. Welcome to T-Dot. So we're getting to the day of discovery. Perhaps someday uh, within our lifetime they will get to model land. They're so sure they deserve a spot in the new class, so convinced that there has been a terrible mistake that they embark on a pilgrimage up the diabolical divide in hopes that model land will see firsthand the grave oversight that has been committed. People call this debilitating illness the plague. The first telltale symptoms are profuse sweating, massive headaches, and bulging veins. What? This plague is worse than the one you might already be familiar with. The B one. Bubo bubonic, that is. What? That plague induces seizures, fevers, chills, gland swelling, the upchucking of blood, and the decomposition of skin while one is still alive. Why is Model Land explaining to us what... Is it bubonic or bubonic? It's bubonic plague, right? Bubonic? The, the both of them sound wrong. Why is Model Land explaining this to us? Like it's the Middle Ages. The Pilgrim Plague, however, is terminal, darling. Oh my god. And I'm not referring to an airline departure lounge. What? What? No. It was so stupid. I didn't even get what they were talking about at first. They're just climbing up a deadly mountain and die. And they call that close to the, the bubonic plague. Women don't walk. It's all a sham. T-Dod's a crock. A phony exam. What the? What the fuck? Tuki had forgotten that not all the participants were exactly in Toxabella quality. She stared at them as they passed, envious of their guts and determination. So, one of Tyra's things she wanted to accomplish with this book was make it empowering for young women. And part of Tuki's story is that she thinks she's ugly and not good enough, and yet here she is being Miss Judgy Judge about how they're not in Toxabella quality. <laughs> A third depicted a massive crowd of young ladies gathered around an auto racetrack in the city of 500? Oh, come on! So, I'm sorry, Palinian, is that like Sarah Palin? Like Alaska? Is that what the- th is that what she's getting at? Am I- am I seeing something where there's nothing? But the obscure obelisks, as they'd come to be called, attracted their own gathering of spectators, many carrying religious icons who believed that the structures were significant to them. Oh, this is getting into cult stuff. So all of this is, it's, it's nonsense anyway. It's nonsense to me, and I have seen all of Top Model. I understand some of the topical references they're making, but these are things that just like date themselves and just disappear into nonsense so quickly. So all of these references that she's making, for instance, Palinian and all that, like it, people years from now, let's say 15 years from now, some kid picks this up. I don't know why they'd be reading Model Land, but let's say that this, I mean, this book will still be around. Someone picks this up, like, does this make any sense? It just loses all meaning, all reference. Like, what? Is this just supposed to be a cute, a cute reference to her living in Alaska? Who's even gonna know that? A bowling ball shaped man with a full white beard and mustache, twinkling little eyes, and a jutting chin, wearing a white top hat, swept straight down into the now empty square, supported by a harness. 
it's turning into Dune or something. You know what I'm imagining? I'm imagining that snowman in that, like, animated Rudolph special. Snowman looking dude on a harness. Devin Rump the sixth. There, that means there are five more Devin Rumps before him. Tuki used to watch the mayor every year, year on television on the day of discovery, wishing, hoping he'd utter, will it be girls with one brown and one green eye? Shut up. Miracle might not have been the best sibling, but she was all Tuki had. Oh, at last she's bonding with Dursley. Cowbells clanged again. They need more cowbell! And then, from his dangling perch, the mayor uttered the very word everyone had waited for all year. Begin! Well, mm -hmm. I don't feel like a lot was accomplished. Like, she planned to run away, and then she didn't, and then they went to uh, the, the, uh, the t Dodd ceremony, put on some makeup, and then the mayor made an announcement. Chapter 9. Bzzz. Mm -hmm. The t Dodd theme song boomed at a pulsating beat. They are running for life. Their beauty is in strife. Running from this wasteland. Two girls got into a fight at the end of their makeshift catwalk, rolling to the ground. Kenya, use the Gyaku Suki move! Her mother screamed. Reverse punch the hairy hag! But watch your hair, sweetie! Oh my god! Then she turned Miracle around, placed Miracle's hands on her hips, and whispered in her ear, Left, then right, then left, then right. She's too dumb to walk. She's too dumb to walk. What is this? I can't turn left. She was dying to say, Really? Me? Have you lost your mind? But instead, a cross between a yelp, a sneeze, and a burp came out. <laughs> they both turned to Zarpessa Zeriano, who strutted confidently right over an open manhole that three girls had just fallen into. Who opened the sewer? It just left- they knew- th this was- this was a strategy by some other girls to get rid of them, opening the sewer to sabotage them right in the middle where everyone is walking. That's insane. Suddenly scouts from Muddleland were everywhere! <laughs> it's them poofing in. <laughs> An asteroid rocket into Earth! An asteroid! That's like Armageddon! A stunning scout emerged from the rubble with skin that seemed to be made of rough stone. She wore a bathing suit ensemble that appeared to be made of rocks. <laughs> They're like X-Men, like mutants. <laughs> the scout nodded and grabbed the sobbing girl's hand, and they both disappeared into a hole in the ground. Oh my god. Like a graboid. <laughs> she, oh, she's like a geodude. <laughs> She's made of rocks. Geodude. And then a nearly naked woman emerged from the center of the car and rose into the sky. She had long limbs and golden skin and wore shiny necklaces strategically placed over her chest and lower half. A gem-encrusted veil covered her face. The scout's hair blew in its own wind. <laughs> She was breaking wind. The scout looked at the De La Cremes and nodded majestically, looking both strong and feminine at the same time. <laughs> And then the scout reached out her long, slender, radiantly decorated hand and beckoned. Tatuki? <gasps> Who saw this coming? Chapter 10. Boo Big Teak Nation. This is not the girl you came for, she pushed Tuki aside. You want my miracle? A sparkling slip of paper appeared in the scout's hand. Studying it, she first eyed miracle. Oh, so she's got to she's got to check the list. Like, did I make a mistake? I don't know. She made a list, she's checking it twice. There, one of the huge screens was her face, her six head, her multiple personality disorder hair, her mismatched eyes. Millions of people all over the world saw Tuki's image right now and thought, what the? This is taking for fucking ever. <laughs> How could Tuki be chosen? She's so freaky. She's so, oh, she's so weird. Mm. This is all like, it's, it's worse because you know this is based off of Tyra Banks' 16-year-old self, so she's just supposed to look like Tyra Banks. And Tuki's inspired by me and my teen self. And the force of a billion hands lifted her up and buoyed her into the air. Suddenly, Tuki was in some kind of translucent mesh pouch. This is just how they always do it. They put them in pouches and then take them away. I don't know, guys. Maybe there's like other things in life more important than model land. Tuki pressed her face hard against the translucent fabric. The figure ran crookedly down the alley, arms spread wide. I'm just imagining her face like in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. They have his like the face in the fabric that looks like it's supposed to be the wall, and then he like crosses his face into it. Then the scout took a sharp turn and headed straight down. Do we need to- oh my- how many pages till they seem to go to model land? Oh my god. 
I'm seeing 12 pages later. It's, she's just emerging from the pouch. What in the fucking world? Brevity. Some brevity here. Just wrap it up. At some point. When she opened her eyes, they were in, in a narrow dimpled tunnel with pale green walls. It looked to Tuki like the inside of a plant stem. Muffled music filled the air, growing louder and louder until Tuki recognized it as the T-Dod theme song set to banjos. What are you doing? In front of her, the scout's paper-flat, gem-studded, now shiny black, patent, leather-clad body rolled out of an enormous... What? What? The scout's paper-flat, gem-studded, and now shiny black patent leather-clad body rolled out of an enormous black rubber mechanism? I don't even know visually how to- like, how to visualize this in my mind. What exactly she's describing here? Does anyone- a, a black- an enormous black rubber mechanism? All at once, Tuki understood. The scout had just unrolled from a conveyor belt. Oh. Thanks, now I get it. Let me remind you, Tyra Banks want, wanted this to be a movie? She wanted this to be a movie. So they're taking a little detour. A little detour into Walmart. Can you imagine them making this <laughs> into a movie? Can you imagine seeing this on screen? I would be first in line, but can you imagine it ever happening? I don't think so. I could see it being like an early 2000s Flash animation. Like maybe it looks like those um, e-surance commercials. They were in a different part of the country, in a different time zone. It's still t Dot here, Tuki thought. So they're just taking, like, a detour to get other girls? Like, come on. Whatever the scout saw and heard, Tuki could see it here all and here too. What? They're, like, psychically connected while she's hanging out in her little pouch? They're fashion Krampuses, right? They're just coming and stealing children and putting them in their big sack and then they're gonna be taken to hell. The twist is gonna be like the island or uh or parts the clonus horror, right? Like they're not going on a vacation. They're just going to get their like their parts harvested. There's no there's no utopia on the other side. Dylan was shaped like a bottle of big boutique cola and had a heart-shaped face. Ah. Oh. Her lips were full and naturally raspberry colored, and her lavender blue eyes sparkled. Can we stop introducing all of these original characters? Do not steal. And she wore it in two ponytails, one on each side of her head. That would be pigtails. <laughs> Strawberries and cream are mixing it up in a blender on aisle number number 97, cackled a voice over the loudspeaker. I wonder what that juicy smoothie is going to taste like. Oh my god, who cares? Tyra, I'm getting mad, y'all. I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. Dylan put her hands on her hips, cleared her throat, and spoke like a referee. Okay, so since the day you were born here in the Boo Big Teak Hospital, nursed on wombat milk, you've dreamed of going to Model Land, am I correct? I'm j look, it's nothing's meaning anything anymore. Like, it's just like my mind is just blanking on anything. Wombat milk. It has nothing to- it's not like that's like satire or anything wombat milk like it's just weird like there's no reason for any of this but the scout swept past all of them and stopped at dylan <gasps> oh my god could it be the one girl they've been focusing on for like ten thousand years suddenly a foot rammed into tookie's waist dylan was in the pouch next to her just like that oh no whoa i've never seen eyes like that before interesting who are you Oh my god, the eyes! Enough with the eyes! Tuki flinched. She wasn't used to people saying, paying attention to her. Enough with the not paying attention to- It's just- just keep repeating the same things. I'm stuck in a hell world. It's a groundhog's day. Guys, I don't know if I'm strong enough. I don't know if I'm strong enough. <laughs> Chapter 11. Shiraz Shiraz. In seconds, the pouch began to fill with thick white goo. Tuki tried to move, but the goo had already reached her waist. It rapidly filled the pouch. Oh no, you're getting covered in white goo? No! Let's descri describe the imagery here. Okay, so they arrive with their, their weird ass little model pouch in this land that's vanilla scented, and the pouch is filling with a thick white goo. This is her description. Why did it have to be white? You know what imagery is coming to our minds. But weirdly, Tuki could breathe it in. 
Ah! Suddenly the goo released them. Tukey and Dylan tumbled, turned around, and saw a seven-foot candle busted open down the middle. Now that she's in a candle, this is like all of the forms of the the ghosts that visit uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. That's I mean that's how it goes, right? You got the you got the fabric golden naked uh, ghost, the rubber conveyor belt ghost, and then you have the white semen candle ghost. <laughs> Dylan wiped some remaining goo from her eyes. You could just say it's wax. Why do you have to describe it this way? Did we for real just pop out of a candle? Oh, this is all just nonsense. It's all just nonsense. Every house had an immense candle where the chimney should have been, and thin candles illuminated every street. Oh, I guess there's a theme here, huh? Suddenly, Tukey knew exactly where they were. Can Del Abra. Guys, guys, I don't, I don't. I this is worse than Kremlin grad. No, oh, I don't know what to do, guys. chapter can i this chapter's not that long but i don't know if i'm strong enough for this today <laughs> can del abra <laughs> can del abra she murmured in a tiny voice she'd read about it in a book once <laughs> Candelabra was the world's candle manufacturing center. The source of waxy light for all. We sell candelabra candles in aisles 385 to 401. Sometimes I trek on over there during my break and inhale the fudge scented ones. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I trek on over there during my break and inhale the fudge scented ones. Don't you just love fudge? <laughs> Don't you just love fudge? <laughs> A tall, olive-skinned teenager with nervous eyes gushed alongside him. Alright. There's a lot of nonsense words in this that are unpronounceable. Um... <laughs> this is apparently the, the made-up candle language? I literally... Cannot say this. This is how this whole thing's written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is this gonna be in the movie, huh? How is this gonna- mm, They're gonna make up their little Klingon language? Klingon candle language? Here's how I'm gonna pronounce this. She urged. They were speaking Labrian, the official language of Candelabra. Fuck off. <laughs> a petite, muscular girl with thick, curly hair, a face covered with freckles, and full lips ran toward the man and his daughter. In Labrian, the girl sang, <sighs> You're a frog-needed seam. I'm sorry, I'm tardy. You're a Labrian dream. The bell of this party. Why does it rhyme in English if she's speaking Labrian? Her own little Oompa Loompa song? <laughs> Your frock needed seem. I'm sorry, I'm tardy. Your labor and dream the bell of this party. Well, of course! I'm trying to get like the Labrian language kind of in there. Well, of course! The pouch bulged and Shiraz tumbled inside and snap into the green hole once more. Into the green hole with her baby gherkin fingers. Mm -hmm. Into the green hole and the white goo in the green hole. I'd like to serve somebody up a green hole. Shiraz smiled slowly at Tuki, clearly amazed that Tuki could speak her language. <gasps> Does she have to learn, like, a uh, candle language for school, or just as a hobby, or...? Ah! Chapter 12. First Princess of Sans Color. The pouch emerged into a sea of thin white strands. Some of them even entered the pouch, covering Tuki's head and drifting past her mouth. It tickled a little. Everyone started to giggle. What is this visual? They're starting off with this? Sticky, pasty gunk with peach fuzz was lodged inside. She frowned. I think we're inside an ear. I'm not even half a page in. So one town is is candle-based, or one 
country or whatever it's supposed to be is candle based and this is just it's just uh futuristic and and people have no skin pigment pigment that's why it's called sans color is that like it seems like this one if you lived in sans color you would have like more than just like candles for your economy like it seems like they were thinking ahead sans co what dylan asked oh color is what tripped her up about 800 pale-skinned girls wearing different types of blue uniforms and caps marched in formation. Oh, are they like, um, at that French school in Harry Potter? How do they stand out, for goodness sakes? It's the Battle of the Blands! Ah, oh, Dylan! I was so gonna support you, Dylan, but it seems like you're just bringing people down. A brigade of pale white blonde soldiers stood at attention. Okay, the Nazi parallels. You're, he you're hearing this, right? You're hearing this, right? Even the birds in the sky were pale. <laughs> oh man, even the birds! Tookie was pretty sure it was rude to call them albinos. <sighs> is it rude if they are? Is it offensive? Maybe calling them albinos like racist to sans colorans or whatever. The platinum-haired blonde or woman in the uh, throne-like chair frowned, popped her tongue, and rasped at the highly decorated soldier to her right. What, like... And then... <sighs> To the untrained ear, the language sounded like someone swallowing a bucket of raw oysters? But to Tuki, each sound was beautiful. Every language was. <laughs> Colorian, what a beautiful language. <laughs> Blurted out more Colorian... Colorian? Colorian? Colorian sounds... it sounds better. Not good. Sorry, I don't speak gobbledygook, Dylan said. Aw, oh, racist! She's Colorian racist! I can't be... Dylan's the worst, right? Uh-oh, Dylan snickered. We're in the middle of a royal mama-daughter showdown. Oh, shut up, Dylan. I am Piper, first princess of Sans Keller, and I have rights. I hereby accept admittance to Model Land. Piper's mother hurled a menacing popping sound at her daughter. <coughs> menacing. <coughs> Suddenly, the pale girl was in the pouch, too. The prime minister's face twisted with shock and fury. Fire! She yelled. Oh my god, they started a war! Model Land started a war! Fire! Fire! A horde of demonic yellow eyed jungle inhabitants stared at the pouch, roaring savagely. One wrong move and the pouch would be ripped to shreds. What are you doing? Went from Nazis to these jungle people. Oh, fuck. Here's the first line of chapter 13, the express lane. What in the name of wombat milk are those things? Dylan screamed as the scout lifted the pouch high above Sans color. We even say the legizards? What is this word? The Lay Gizards. Is that a play on something again? I'm missing her dumb puns. She keeps doing puns or allusions to things that I don't get. Yes, the bubble protects us from the sun and the Lay Gizards. They live outside Sans Keller and thrive off of Calorian sweetbreads. <laughs> Calorian sweetbreads? Isn't sweetbread like, isn't that like just testicles? Is that something else? Bread basket? That's the, that's the crotch, right? Really? My daddy passed when I was a wee little thing. Dylan looked off into the distance. Piper turned to Tukey. What about you? Is your father alive? <laughs> your father dead or what? Voodoo style drum beats sounded from the ground. Voodoo style. A wide expanse of bright orange and red flame shot from the top of the mountain. Are we finally fucking getting there? 134 pages in. The shoe looked as though something had taken a huge bite out of it. Tuki swore she saw blood smeared on the toe. If this ended with, like, there was no model land and they do, like, kill them, that'd be fucking hilarious. The pouch's walls began to drip liquid lightly at first, but then the wetness poured down in sheets. Come on, quit covering them in liquids and goos. There was a ripping sound and the pouch split open, spilling out Tuki and the girls. <gasps> Rebirth. <laughs> when Tuki's eyes adjusted, she saw a tall creature with a head shaped exactly like a human hand. How does this get weirder? So this is a weird thing with a hand for a head with eyes in it. 
Pan's Labyrinth, the Eye Hand, some sort of Archangel or something. All right, this is the hand talking. Talk to the hand, ladies. Hello, mademoiselles. Je m'appelle Guru Applesauce. Applauses. I, I thought it said applesauce. Your lack of tardiness deserves a round of applause. We oui? be our guest. Be our guest. We will sacrifice the best. In motherland, you lose your soul. Something, something in a hole. With a squeal of pleasure, the creature leaned in all the way to the left and hit its hand head to its left palm and then did the same on the right side with its right palm. So it's like, eh, eh. But as she grasped the girl's heart, she suddenly felt one small note of reassurance. She wasn't going to die alone. So she thinks this hand appears and they're gonna die. Wow, oh, model land's great. Slowly, the cloud wall re reassembled, forming a door of black smoke. Are they not in yet? Smaller pieces of fabric shot from the figure's fingers and into the air, hanging weightlessly over the girls. The strips of material tumbled and lashed around their heads, ripping and combining violently into undergarments of every color and fabric? She, so she's from her fingernails, from her fingers, she's shooting out cloth that's turning into underwear. <laughs> A fire engine red felt pork pie hat, a pair of metal studded heather, heather gray ankle boots. It was like they were in a zero gravity department store. Now we're just talking about clothes again in the scouts. We're not at model land yet. I thought maybe they were there. Now we're just seeing them dress up now. A high waisted corseted blue indigo fine. We're not even, see now we're just talking about the final outfit. They were just talking about outfit potentials. Now this is the final outfit. A high-waisted, corseted, indigo-blue, fine-woven cotton skirt barely covered her butt. You know, you could have made this whole book just 140 pages. Just what we've read so far. Just, just this long. And then summarized everything that you needed in Model Land. The fact that this is so ridiculously long is fucking, this is, it's ludicrous. It was the celebrated, renowned, mythical Intoxabella, C.L. The Intoxabella sniffed her armpits. Yuckity yuck! I totally forgot to put on my sweat stopper this morning. I'm a girl who can't skip a day, if you know what I mean. Oh, this is just supposed to be adult Tyra is what it is. She's like, oh, I'm so relatable. This is what Tyra thinks is relatable if she does stuff like sniffing her armpits. <laughs> she actually had substance behind her heavily made up face and accessory adorned body. She has substance because she smelled her armpits. Yeah. Just like Tyra. Just like Tyra. She gave keynote addresses at college graduation, speaking about her many interpretations of human beings' physicality. So did you just talk to how people about how people looked at college graduations? Like, here's my descriptions of this person? What's that about? That's the way, 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 way you spell C-L. Please stop. C-L said flatly. Oh my god. I very much relate to this. That's the most relatable she's been. Girl, you are so real. Recite a poem about a CL, Dylan begged. <laughs> Quit kissing adult Tyra's butt. Are they in Model Land? Or are they just outside of Model Land? Is this what the, is this how they get in the Model Land? I don't know. Beyond stood the carved blue, gold blue and silver Model Land gates. Not in Model Land yet. They are outside the gates. Not in Model Land yet. A chorus of unseen women's voices Eulated. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I think I know what that means. Hello, and welcome to Motherland. Isn't that the the ululating? You ululating? Other scouts in their pods, pouches, and people pockets. People pockets. I never want to hear people pockets again. VK of Nordensvi. She said, referring to an icy land. Ah, I get what they're doing with Norden Swee. Franca of Cappuccina. The next girl in life said, oh, come on. What's my name? Dunkachino. Dunkachino. It's all right to use real countries. We're, it's understood that this is a fantasy book that doesn't exist in the real world. You don't have to have, like, you can just say they're from India or Norway. Or what? Cappuccino? I don't know. Was it supposed to be Italy? Tuki, Piper, Dylan, and Shiraz moved up the line, in front of her. Tuki, spot. Do we need to see them registering for fucking Model Land? Each person. This is like the room when they're at the coffee shop and you just see what every extra is ordering for no reason. The painting smiled awkwardly and yelled, "Sub, um, substantiated." 
but it didn't sound so sure of its decision. Ah, oh. that's like when the girls who went to the modeling institute on Top Model uh, got rejected via screen when they put their hands on there. That's got to be a rough way to go. She wasn't really whispering anything to the mosaic at all. What was happening, however, was that one of her jeweled tentacles was making contact with the face. This is like the avatar, um, when they touch their little, little things together and they're having sex. 150 pages. Let's go to Model Land. Chapter 14, Arancia Rosa de Cecilia. I'm looking for Tuki de la Creme from Peppertown Metopia. She had a Beijingle accent. I don't know what the fuck a Beijingle accent is. I mean, you flew here in CL, didn't you? In CL? So they were supposed to be inside her with the fabric? I thought it was just a pouch she held, but the pouch is like part of her? Like, was it literally like a kangaroo pouch? That she carried her in? I'm sorry, I'm very cute. I thought it was like Santa Claus, like she was holding a pouch with her. I misunderstood severely what was happening. So her weird kangaroo pouch is what filled with like white goo all the time and all like, but it was made of fabric. So she had a fabric pouch. I'm sorry, what? Before Zhen Zhen could finish gushing, guru applause. Oh good, this fucker's back. She raised one jeweled tentacle at Zhen Zhen and gave her an eerie wide-eyed look. Ooh, the tentacles! <laughs> Tuki wondered if CL, CL had something to do with it, but she couldn't think about it for too long. When she looked up again, yeah, you couldn't think about much for too long. In this book, their eyes grew narrower and their brows more furrowed. Whispers began. Ooh, these are evil smizes. They're frowning with their eyes. Frizing. Bitterballs are in aisle 592 at the Boo Big Teak. Oh, is it called Boo Big Teak because they're all big? Like, they're all, like, fiercely real models? Is that why it's called that? The two girls muttered in Pyramidian? Come on! That, Zhen Zhen said, pointing at the egg building as though reading Tuki's mind, is the... Is the orb arena where b pretty boys and gorgeous girls battle in man attack the one class you'll have with our brother male modeling academy bestosterone i'm sorry you heard that right <laughs> i i I, so, first of all, Swerve. Swerve Model Land. They introduce, this late in the game, a sister, uh, or brother academy, if you will, of male models called Bestosterone. I mean, why didn't they call Model Land, uh, why, why didn't, why didn't they call this, uh, why didn't they call it Bestrogen? If you're gonna go that direction. What in the name of Wombat Milk is going on with the Bestosterone? No, we never know when man attack will happen, Zhen Zhen said. What does this have to do with modeling? Males are accessories at Model Land. Don't ever forget, we're the stars, not the boys. Yes, they do some modeling stuff, but basically we have them here to work for us. Build our buildings, provide security and eye candy, that sort of thing. But they have a modeling academy. Is it, is it just they're like, they're accessories in Model Land, but in the, the model academy for boys, they're not? Tyra's really going to break barriers for men in the modeling industry with this. I thought it was just about who was the prettiest. Which certainly wouldn't be you, Zarpessa said under her breath. She's the Draco Malfoy of this story. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. She dodged the flames, nimbly cleared the walls, expertly walked the runway upside down, and gracefully performed a dance routine before disappearing into the waterfall. So in this world, like, what use are the Seven Sevens and the, and the Intoxabellas and all this? Like... Why are they dodging stuff? Why are they fighting? What is, like, what do they, what's the purpose? Why is it so sought after? What do you do if you're, if you're a 7-7? Seven -seven? Other than people are like, oh, jealous. Catwalk Corridor isn't half as bad as the ugly room. The ugly room. Catwalk Corridor and the ugly room. The ugly room. The ugly room. The ugly room. Best Osterone, the ugly room. Four steps later, her large right foot got caught on the back of her left leg. She stumbled, suddenly airborne, then went straight down into a textbook. 
Tuki de la creme fall. Oh, I thought literally she was falling into a textbook at first. Anything can happen. That's the end of chapter 14. Chapter 15. The Belladonna's Burden. The barbed bush opened, revealing the passageway to the O. Is that like... I think they all live in different letters in Model Land? Is that what it is? She's jumping through a bush to get into the O? Tuki rounded the curve at the end of the walkway and came to a wall of... She squinted. Are those zippers? Zippers? A stuck zipper started to wobble. Oh no, someone's gonna take their, their model land dinghy out. Turning on her heel, CL stamped up to the nearest zipper wall and put one leg into the halfway stuck zipper through which she just emerged. She's going into someone's pants. She's doing a party in the pants. Immediately, she got the sense that she was sliding down, down, down. Screams echoed in her ears. After a moment, she realized they were hers. <gasps> it's the Willy Wonka tunnel scene. We're just in the zip zap. Zip zap! <sighs> So this is like they're they're like t transporters or teleport or they're little they go into the tube and then zoop zip zap them wherever zip zap zoopity bap bap instead of being an opening to the other side of the wall like Tuki had expected the zipper fed into a chute filled with fast flowing air oh my god it's the Futurama tubes ninety nine Bellas <laughs> and a bitch ain't one they were totally nude and their <laughs> flesh scream seemed to be made of hard plastic with creases at every joint. The shoulders, elbows, and wrists, the neck, hip, knees, and ankles, which made them look like living, breathing mannequins. Mannequin 2 on the move. There's mannequin people now? Is this what happens when you get too old? Or like, like they haven't become real boys yet? Maybe they were even her new friends. <gasps> Tuki have friend? Tuki friend? She made a mental note to herself to start spelling friends with four S's. Friends in her team mail jail? No, you don't need a note for this. You don't even need to put this in your book. Why was this included? Friends. It's like, you guys ever heard of that movie? It's just called S. It's about this guy turning into a snake. The music changed abruptly to a funky military march. A funky military march? <laughs> Just, um, you know what, actually, play the model anthem. And they are looking me, they are running for life, their beauty is in strife. A group of young men marched in doing a highly powerful staccato dance. What is a staccato dance like? Mm, 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 mm. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the board. The board. So it's just B R E D, capitalized. The board. Another board member, an ancient looking troll of a man, had aged parchment skin. Oh, he could be ugly because he's just in management. Long, long ago, the battle raged between the muses and the nail polish remover. What? It's because she's trolling us, right? The battle raged between the muses and the nail polish remover? I'm not even- I don't even know what they're getting at any point. Like, a lot of these things I'm like, alright, I kinda get it, it's stupid, but I get it. I don't understand what they're even talking about. The troll scroll? But gotta pay the troll scroll to get that boy's soul. You want the baby boy's hole, you gotta pay the troll toll. You gotta pay the troll toll to get in. One board member had lizard skin and yellow eyes with a forked tongue that sprang out of its mouth. What? Lizard people? You can't in you can't introduce lizard people? That thing makes me feel normal, Tuki thought. Yeah, why is she going on about how she's ugly? You're not feeling so weird now with your two different colored eyes, Tuki. A stunning figure that looked like it was three quarters man, one quarter woman. Pre That's such an odd fraction. You got lizard people and you got weird tattoo, forehead scrolling people, and then you just have androgynous. You count that as like weird or like non-binary. You count that as like this weird supernatural thing. Like, is that what they're doing? <laughs> what is this? The deep timp timpani rolled. <laughs> Even Piper did a unique robot-like bop, every movement precise. Domo Origato, Mr. Shirazo, Domo, Domo. The statue was as tall as a ten-story building and made of what appeared to be shimmering, flawless diamond. Its chin tilted to the right, its hands froze artfully around its cheekbones, and its eyes remained half-closed. So... <laughs> 
I'm a statue. Hmm. I'm a statue. What you thinking about? Just statue stuff. Her name's Persimmon. I like the weird fruit. Jin Jin replied. She's the Belladonna's chief mannequin. Mannequin? Just because you mannequin doesn't mean you mannequin. No, just because you mannequin doesn't mean you manna should. The definer of all things beautiful and the esteemed leader of all Bellas lucky to be led, I present to you the Belladonna of Model Land. <laughs> Can you tell I'm out of voices? <laughs> now the accents come out. Then the statue directed its full attention to the entire audience and, accompanied by the full orchestra, began to sing. <coughs> All laws antiquated must be respected Or I'll discard you like moth in cashmere Listen to me now, my spanking no new no sees Your infants, your rascals, and oh so askew You've entered a world that most would slay for But amongst them all I have chosen you I've been looking for a model land I've been looking so long I've been looking for a model land Cause it's really long da, 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 da. The Belladonna began the chorus of her melody and the older Belladonna Bella sang with her Oh fuck, there's more! Model land is your new home Home, home, the older Bella sang <laughs> Fuck! Oh my god, oh my god, the song just keeps going. It keeps going for pages. It keeps going till the end of the chapter. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Hosiery and hound's tooth and rougey lips to chalets. Bandos and bodices and LBDs at soirees. And then you will have a BM and, <laughs> and PMS and your BO. <laughs> I B S M something something. All right, all that stuff about PMS wasn't real, but you know, I had to clarify because it could be. Cocktail dresses, cardigans, concealers for tired eyes, and practice all your posing tricks from sunset to sunrise. Perform in petticoat themed, much attended fashion elite expo. Come on! There's no way someone's singing this! There, you can't set this to any melody and have this work. Absolutely not. <laughs> This rowdy rabble rouser, this shameless charlatan, this skank scallywag, skank scallywag, what? This is real, skank scallywag. You've all grown up dreaming, hoping to be her. Now this triple seven seven is inferior to you. This is like a meatloaf song. A meatloaf song where he just sings what he's seeing. Like he's like, that mirror looks like this. Uh, the objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Oh, this is going on over here. Oh, and then we made out for a while. I would love to know. You know what? No, I can just say for a fact, no one's ever done a rendition of this song. Like. No one's ever actually like done a proper version. I hope someone records what like a version of this song, and I hope it's Tyra Banks. Who knows? The upper class Bellas called in Gaudian. If you took that sentence out of context, put it. Would this make any sense? <laughs> the song is still not over. I regret to announce. We have a page and a half, and it will be done. The meek and misguided muckety muck flunkies will ride Senso Unico through farewell toll booths. What? what? I feel like I'm having a stroke right now. <laughs> Quattro. Why are this? They're singing and speaking Spanish and second string bellas will up for the silver screen miming for the multiplex so stride so uh so trite so uncouth no one puts uncouth in a song is this something Tyra's projecting about actresses but isn't is not Tyra herself an actress uh, after her stunning roles in life size one or two uh, and uh, and uh, that Halloween one Freddy, please. okay you got me. The song is done!
I hated that. Now it's chapter 16, the THBC Tamasha, climbing through a zip zap and disappearing down the hole. I can't do just zip zap. I gotta do the whole like skit scat. She jumped into one of the zip zap baps so enthusiastically she scraped the top of her head on its sharp pull tab. Tuki cringe seeing bits of blood and hair still hanging from- Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Why is this book so needlessly violent? I don't understand that. I get like the occasional dark moment where it's appropriate, that's fine. Like I'm not squeamish about it. I just don't understand why like it just happens so often, like for no reason. They were spat out on the other side side in reverse order, sliding across a cold metal floor and coming to a halt in a room lit by a single dim bulb swinging overhead. You know, we don't need to know in real time everything that's happening in Tuki's life. The entire group turned to see a girl lying motionless and at the mouth of a zipper. Blood pooled beneath her head. Everyone started to scream. Needlessly violent. Friendship with Harry Potter ended. Modeland is now my friend. Guru Ganero's laugh sent chills up Tuki's spine. Oh, sorry, I should... Now, you will be experiencing a fashion show from start to finish in five phases. So let's get started. Oh my god, we're gonna have to go through every fa Everything has like a little phase and step by step. This is Tyra's writing process. It's infuriatingly repetitious. <laughs> and after she was finished with it, she passed the liner to Piper's artiste, who then used it and passed it to Sarpesses. You're not supposed to share eye makeup. Not supposed to share it because you can get an eye infection that way. Little tip from me to you. The closest anyone had ever come to examining her face was when Creamy took her to the doctor last year for tests to figure out why her forehead seemed to be growing faster than the rest of her face. Oh, mean! She almost looked good. Oh my god, it's almost like with makeup and money and fashion, you can make anyone look pretty. Whoa, even ugly Tuki. An older, unrecognizable person was staring at Tuki. It had a boil growing on its nose, letting out a smoke that smelled of rotten eggs and animal droppings. Much of its hair had fallen out and clung. This is such whiplash. Oh my god, Tuki and the creature whispered. That was when she realized the gruesome creature was her. What? Oh, she was looking in the mirror and she went... Oh. Chapter 17. Home Sour Home. The spot where the ruby had been on Kamalini's smize was now a gaping hole four inches wide, exposing her brain. Needlessly! Needless horror! What is this? Angelica's zip zap head injury had split open wide from the top of her head to the base of her neck. When she screamed, her exposed vocal cords, which lay in a spaghetti like tangle at her throat, vibrated. Oh my god. What in the world? This is so gory. This is Silent Hill. This is supposed to be a young adult novel? They want, like, kids to read? Look, guys, like, I'm not against horror stuff, but this is, like, completely not appropriate for this particular book at all. Ew. My head's hurt so much. Both sides of Angelica cried. It's turning into phantasmagoria. It's dreadful to be hideously fugly, isn't it? This is the first book I've ever read that has fugly written into it. Fugly. Suddenly, she sat up straighter. Wait a minute, oh, Sherlock Tukey. It's a trick. Oh my god, she's so smart. What a, what a clever, clever trick making them ugly. Shared utensils give you creepy conjunctiv conjunctivitis, gory gangrene, bubonic boils, atrocious abscesses, styes, and staphylococcus. Oh my god, they're, they're, that's what I was saying about eye infection. See, she's taking this as a moment to to, to, get, to dispense some wisdom. You know, like much like wingtip before, uh, now we are learning um, the true lessons about this stuff. Um, see, this is a book um, that, uh, that is useful um, for everyone. See, we thought they were learning the lesson, but it was truly us that was learning it. The necklace Tuki was wearing started to get warm, then scalding hot, and then it wrapped several times around her neck and squeezed and squeezed. A door appeared across the room and a lantern swayed back and forth. Home, they know, they know the score now. You ain't gonna trick them twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. See, we're learning a lesson about forgeries. You're, you're, you're screwing these rich ass designers with these fakes. Thanks, Tyra. 
Have we all had our ears pierced, ladies? Gennaro asked. Chaste was also standing still. Slowly, the needle bore down on her head. Its tip piercing her skull and continuing all the way through her body to the ground! When the needle retracted, Chaste was gone? Needless! Needless! This is, like, Hellraiser. Pinhead's Hell World. Just want to point out the, uh, the formatting, just so you know. This is, oh, this is fun. Falsely upping the page count. Shiraz's spunky broken English. Spunky broken English. And finally, she passed through the home door. Tuki, Tuki's misspelled. She forgot the I. And finally, as she passed through the home door, Tuki bid a silent goodbye to Bottle Land. End chapter. Or end book? You could just end it there. On page 200, chapter 18, La Lumiere. A stiff breeze made her face tingle. It smelled familiar, sort of like tangerines? No. Already? I didn't finish the paragraph. Was thigh high boot camp just a nightmare? Oh, do you mind terribly not <laughs> biting at my boob? Why? <laughs> Admiring the D, are you? A voice asked. Oh my god. And she wants the D. <laughs> Tuki saw Shiraz, Dylan, and Piper walking toward her in slow motion, all wearing the same outfit she was. Oh, this will be for the trailer for the Model Land movie. Slow mo. Those who don't make it, where they go? They're gone forever. Wait, who said. Who is even saying this? I think it's Tuki. <laughs> this is the uncommon room well, you'll, where you'll all hang out. The uncommon room. She, th she really thinks she's going to one-up Harry Potter, huh? Hmm. I get it, Tuki announced. The D stands for dorms. Exactly, Zhen Zhen said. Oh, she thinks we're idiots. The girls oohed and awed at the performance, which ended with each centura nosediving into the group, finding its recipient and wrapping itself two times around the girl's waist. Whap! One whipped around Zarpesa. Zing! What? Zing is the noise? This... The sky. Zing! It seemed like a cushion of air was now suspending Shiraz three feet above the floor. Wait, so... Do they have, like, Wonder Woman's invisible plane, but it's their beds? Wonder Woman's invisible bed? Like, why do they have to be invisible? Is there a reason for this? Like, there's no reason for these things. That's the thing I don't get. Like, Half the time, it's like, why is this happening? The outline of a bed materialized before her eyes. A cushy white comforter and four fluffy pillows rested atop the mattress. Oh, so it's just invisible part of the time? That's even more pointless, though, but why? Tuki smiled so hard her cheeks hurt. Whee! At almost the same time, their knees bumped into an invisible bedpost. They both allowed themselves to fall forward. This seems convenient, these invisible beds you have to find by feel. Sure enough, outlines of two beds quickly formed. I'm already done with these beds. For a brief moment, Tuki took in the eyes of the girls in the room and longed for a set of matching irises. Enough with the double eye victimizing. Enough of this. Kamalani shrugged. My parents were so happy, though, but they are worried about my addiction to... The drugs? Shiraz jumped in. Excuse me? Excuse me? No, not drugs, Kamalani said. The whiskey? Shiraz guessed again. Shiraz, mind your own business. Worse. This. She held up her head, Bangor. Shiraz squinted. You addicted to the music? <laughs> What is this? My mother is a chakra wood actress. Chakra wood? Just say India. Just say India. Chakra wood? I started using it after something happened. It eases the pain, helps me forget. It's hard for me to be without it. I get withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> She sighed. My mother even made this one waterproof so I can wear it while swimming and in the shower. She's addicted to the music from Chakra Wood. Somehow this feels crazier than the guy with the hand on his head. At least that felt kind of, you know, Alice in Wonderland whimsy or an attempt. I don't know what this is about. This is supposed to be for young adults? Is that it? Who's the audience? The audience is Tyra. And then nodded and placed the headbanger on Tuki's head. Tuki felt a rush as the music hit her brainwaves. The music hit her brainwaves. 
So she's like, you're addicted to this, can I try it? D don't try music, even once. My mom's latest song is a hit in Chakra. It will be the music for the big dance number in her next movie. She's not creating a lore here. She's just changing words from India and and Bollywood into <laughs> into Chakra and Chakra Wood and then saying the same thing. Like, this is nothing. It's just changing certain words and that's it into stupider words. Every language she knows! Shiraz called matter-of-factly from across the room as she traced the lines of her face on her comforter. Is she Yoda? Every language she knows! <laughs> Magical two years! <laughs> Zarpesa stood in the doorway. Oh, they don't want a poor person in there. A disingenuous smile on her face. Hmm. No one spoke as she pranced across the room and plopped down on Tuki's bed. <laughs> Oh, goodness, she said, running her hands over the outline of Tuki's face on the comforter. This reminds me of my face after the THBC makeup attack. Ugh. She wrote it that way. Ugh. She ripped around and stared at Tuki, whoosh, challenging her to say something. Tuki stared at the marble floor. Head hanging, Tuki walked through the room trying to feel for another bed. It's like the Arrested Development, um, Charlie Brown music. Finally, in the darkest corner of the room, she hit an invisible post. Oh, she's gonna sit in the corner. It was smaller than the others, and the sheets were the teensiest bit scratchy. Oh, she gets an ugly, scratchy, tiny bed. Cause she's, oh, she's got it so bad. It feels like the magic beds, like, or the room, or whoever's uh, rigging these beds is really mean to do it this way. Like, to just be like, hey, you got the good bed, psych. And oh, one more thing. Well. We tell time by color, not by number. We tell time by color, not by number. It's blue o'clock. <laughs> Look, you don't need to change the- I know Tyra's all about breaking rules. I know she's all about breaking the rules. She's gonna- she's gonna change fashion and the industry forever by doing exactly the same thing. But listen. Some rules don't need to be broken. It's fine. No one was thinking like, oh, I hate the way that we tell time. We got numbers for a reason. It's not like we're like, now we're gonna go by shapes today. It's the triangle hour. As soon as Zhen Zhen departed, four nightstands appeared, resting on- Oh, does Tuki have a shitty nightstand, though? Tuki changed into her nighty. It had an attached cape that hit halfway down her thighs. I, look, a cape is great, but you don't- do you need it for sleep? Again, unnecessary. It feels like it's gonna get all tangled up when you're trying to sleep. The cape went halfway down her thigh, so it's a long cape. It's not even like a, a little cute little capelet. It's- it's- it's, it's a full-on cape. Like, she's Batman. She's Super Smize. <laughs> She reached into the smaller pocket of her cargo pants and closed her fingers around the round, dented button. To Uki! Okay, so... Surely she has things that mean more to her than this shitty-ass button that this guy dropped and she chased into a garbage can and her name sort of was spelled on it after people stepped on it. Like, surely she has a life more than this. Serpessa made a face. Frantic, Tuki skidded around the room looking for something to cover up the pin. Eee! That's like, yeah, that's not suspicious. And nervously fashioned the flower into an oversized corsage, which she pinned over the button. The brooch was nearly the size of her head and looked as though it might lash out and bite off someone's arm. What? But it covered up her secret Theophilus treasure. I've never read Fifty Shades of Grey, but this sounds crazier than that. It sounds not as well written. <laughs> This is not as well written as Fifty Shades of Grey. I think I can confidently say this. She was so exhausted from the day, the tiniest muscles, even the ones around her eyes, ached. But what? I mean... Okay, so she thought she was ugly for a while, and she did, like, uh, she ran a bit. The Lumiere is the special light that shines on Bella's at, at night. What? It's whatever the most flattering light is. Candlelight, sunlight, whatever. And look, mine is a spotlight. The Lumiere is supposed to give you all kinds of restorative gifts through the night. Plus, it helps keep your skin fresh and dewy. What? They have... So, the, so models have, like, special lights that shine on the midnight so when they're trying to sleep and it's got, like, restorative powers or something? Tuki waited for her own light to shine, but the space above her bed remained dark. Oh, she does <laughs> That's actually like a benefit, right? Why would you complain that you don't have a light shining on you? 
all night. Oh my, I've sacrificed so much beauty rest speaking to you all. Good night. <sighs> Chapter 19. <clears throat> Kara, 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 and the dormitory effect. That is a one word, Kara, Kara, Kara. And the dormitory effect. Disoriented, Tuki tum stumbled into the large, sterile-looking community bathroom. As she did, a dull pain shot through her legs, hips, and stomach. Ugh. She doubled over, over, feeling as though she was about to vomit. Is she pregnant? Is that what's going on? Uh, it, you know, knowing fucking model land, it would be like she like she's pregnant for like a lesson. You know, like like you have to model even when you're pregnant and then like there's graphic birthing scenes and then like and then they just move on like nothing happened lada it's this is all in stupid fonts lada defa cake seven seven oh excuse me mm. yes persecution never forget never return she spelled persecution a really dumb way dumb Tuki spotted Piper at a corner sink and walked toward her, trying not to fall over from the from another sudden stomach spasm. What is it like synchronizing their their periods? Is that what's going on? She took her baby fingers and traced the lines of her face, ending with the outline of her round, full lips. The baby fingers. They keep doing the baby fingers metaphors. I don't like it. It was gone for a while. It was that was a good that was a good run of no baby fingers. Most of the uniform had been easy to put on correctly, and although wearing the, un the leotard over her pants felt strange, it certainly was a cool look. <clears throat> what? So they wear it over their pants? They wear leotards over pants? How is that a cool look? Time, Kelly Green, Sharp Tray, Mastication, Time, Goldenrod, Goldenrod, Sharp. You know, I could I could just stop now. I could I could throw this in the garbage right now. <laughs> Midnight blue, Kelly green, and goldenrod sharp. Tuki needed to learn how to tell time all over again. Yeah, it's almost like this is stupid. Hulking male models from testosterone worked giant construction machines. So they're they're models in their own right, but they're also just like. Just servants? Others struck overtly sexualized poses for a photographer while they work. It's just making me think of like music videos from the 90s where people are like sweaty in a spark factory. <laughs> Tuki turned and saw a muscular bestostero. They're called bestostero? Why didn't they call them bestostero? It was right there. It was right there. We're building this new 7-7 stadium for you. Bravo went on, gesturing to the site. A couple of years ago, a huge fireball dec- <laughs> Excuse me? A fireball decimated the old stadium. This is a lot to take him. This is a lot. Its iris was constructed from green jade, and the lid wore yellow eyeshadow like a smize. You know what? The thing is, I'm, I'm worried I'm becoming, like, desensitized to this. I'm worried this at uh, things that are just like this is all becoming too normal. And it's like they went into a giant eye made out of metal with some eyeshadow on it. It's like sure. Is it Lumiere? Shiraz exclaimed excitedly. See, when you say Lumiere, I just keep thinking that it's the, it's it's like the hand cuz he has the French voice, which is like Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast, the Candleman. And she's from a candle land, so it's to all these think these elements. His features flapped and twisted as if they were made of something much more flexible than flesh and bone. But despite all that, Tuki thought he was quite handsome in his own special way. Really? Because he sounds like a freak. If you've noticed, we are on a rocky boat. Metaphor intended. And your, shall I say, cycles have all been synchronized. I'm sure you've all noticed by now. Crampy, see? Excuse me. If I went to a class and some fucking freak dude comes out and is like, Yeah, we went ahead and synced your periods for ya. You're welcome. I'd be like, Alright, I'm fucking out. I'll, I'll go work at the orphan factory. Groans sounded throughout the room. Tuki pressed on her abdomen. Ugh. Ugh. Does it have to be gross? Why does everything have to be gross in this? But why, though? Is there a reason their periods have to be synchronized? 
How well can you project an image that is opposite of how you are feeling or at odds with your surroundings? Oh my god, I always pick the worst voices for someone who's gonna talk for fucking ever. But fail and you may be regulated, relegated to- <laughs> You may be regulated, like your period. A shark bite sound filled the room and then a three-dimensional imp- <laughs> Shark bite sound? How? <laughs> filled the room and then a three-dimensional image of a two-headed vulture picking at a child's eyes appeared before every Bella. Now come all the time with this violence. Tookie, 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 Pacifico cried over and over again, which made Zarpessa twist around and smirk triumphantly at her. Hmm, smirk. The only girl he corrected almost as much as was Dead-Faced Bo, who didn't even freak. Dead-Faced Bo is my band name. She twisted to the right, leaned over, and threw up. Some of it landed in Bo's hair, but to her relief, Bo threw up too. Impassively, of course. So she just- Bleh. Bo doesn't give a fuck. I like this energy. Kara, Kara, Kara was your first class, or should I say your first period of the day? <laughs> but guess what? It will also be your last! This cycle you had this morning will be the last period you will ever have for the rest of your lives! <laughs> what was the point? What was the point? What was the point? What was the, po what was the point? What was the point? We want no excuses for you missing period, missing classes or shoots or shows. So model Andy's is reading you of the pain and suffering of your menstrual cycles and cramps forever. The Belladonna Mast had explained. This is just Tyra's fantasy. You will still have the ability to procreate as you reach adulthood, but no more periods. Period. What? 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 <laughs> the guru beamed at them. Isn't that grandissimo? Get the fuck- Their body, their choice. Get the fuck out of their ovaries, model land. And Tuki felt another kind of cramp in her stomach. One of loss and regret. I finally reached womanhood, she thought. I finally got something that Miracle has teased me so much about, and now it's gone. They take away her period, will they leave her with nothing? Nothing that is hers! The second gift, the guru said, facing the girls. Now you can view your pictures of today's session. All right, fuck off, man. You know those rumors about scouts cho choosing civilian girls to come to Model Land to be used as sacrifices, experiments, and food? I certainly wouldn't want to eat that. Tuki, yeah, she, she, you know what? You're not too good to eat, Tuki. Zorpesa. We were all rooting for you, how dare you? Chapter 20, Run and Gun. Then Gennaro Nars. Nars? Is this something that we did? Well, who was Nars? Suddenly, a bouquet of flowers protruded from CL's lips. CL wrenched the flowers out of her mouth, but a large rose bush popped out next. She struggled to remove the bush, trying unsuccessfully to avoid the thorns? She sneezed, and greenish petals shot out her nose. Ew. What's the point, though? I know I've asked this a lot about what is the point, but like, I mean. Who's into this? If they think like young girls that are into fashion, maybe there's older girls too into fashion, but I mean like, I mean, clearly this is supposed to be like a young adult novel, but it's got all this like horrifying stuff in it that like, I don't think they're into. A private fashion show by CL, Tuki thought, and she changed outfits so quickly. How? It's just, it's just so, <laughs> like, it's just so inane. One half of her hair was sheared in a pixie style. The other half was a long curly bush. All right, this is gonna go on for a while. I'm gonna read very, very quickly. Let's see how quickly I can do it. Mirrors on all sides of the room showed her every angle. Flashes from invisible camera snapped to see all paused and posed at the end of the runway. She did the same quick change for four more outfits. The girls clapping with glee every time she emerged from the back room. But as she strutted the end of the runway again, Tuki see that whatever clothing was rubbed against the skin of her back, CL did the most minute flinch. The last outfit she donned was a red polka dot jumpsuit with attached hood and polka dotted boots, a necklace made of cantaloupe sized rouge colored pearls draped from her neck to her knees. Then the music, ce music ceased. I'm just so tired of reading what outfit they're wearing at what time? Gennaro smirked. Mm. Why is the Miss J stand in so mean? Does Tyra have like a thing against him? I'm just curious.
Tuki ran and ran and ran all the way, off the end of the runway. She knew she was no longer on the platform, but she was but was determined not to stop, and ran and ran and ran until boom, she hit the wall. <laughs> All right, so she just kept running until she ran into a wall. I, I know this is supposed to- some of these things Tyra thinks is funny. I don't know if this part's supposed to be funny. That's the eternal mystery, right? Thank God, class is over. Gennaro sighed. I guess we don't have time for the rest of you today. How short was this class? Did they, how much time did they spend with CL hawking up bushes and shit <laughs> and then like that took up their whole class time maybe color times like color hours are shorter like you know purple o'clock is is like five minutes if you girls don't watch out actresses will take your place in the future runways why does tyra hate actresses <laughs> another figure appeared behind tuki it was zarpessa and there was a wide smirk on her face <clears throat> There was a devilish look on Zarpessa's face. Another devilish look. Devilish look and smirk. There should be like a count. Oh, did I tell you that I found a centura under your bed? I'm still so perplexed as to how it got there. I mean, you're wearing it, aren't you? Or maybe you have two. One magical and one not. Why did she tell her though? She just gave away the whole grift. She could like keep it going for a while. It feels like Zarpessa's not in it for the long game. Chapter 21, Jammers, Chowers, and Poachers. Tuki walked down Beautification Boulevard to her third and last class of the day, Mastication. No, oh, come on now. It's just a class for eating. Oh, come on now. I, oh man, if you fail Mastication, like how badly are you doing? She felt a familiar pang in her stomach again, a mixture of pity and envy for Sarpessa. When she started talking about pangs in her stomach, I thought her period was back with a vengeance. And her throat felt parched from all the running into walls in Runaway. Wait, her throat felt parched from running into the wall? And the windows seemed effervescent, like they were carbonated. Tuki stuck out her tongue to lick the window, all like Willy Wonka. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries! On the door, the word mastication was spelled in macadamia nuts. Inside was a large three-tiered room. Copper receptacles stood on each tier. Copper, Copper pipes connected the receptacles and disappeared into smooth concrete walls. The smell of food was everywhere. So does Tyra think if there's like an excessive amount of description in this book, like that counts as story? Or world building? Because there's so much of this without actual like content happening. It could almost be charming if there was a story around it. <laughs> Top her head sat a hybrid of a chef's hat and a cowboy hat, filled with tiny bags of spices, and her hair consisted of long tube-like food items? Strands of spaghetti, whips of licorice, blades of wheatgrass? What? It's a literal Betty Spaghetti. Have you heard about Betty? Betty Spaghetti! She's got real cool clothes! I loved clothes! She's got real cool hair! I love her! She sat down on the edge of the desk, nibbling on her hair, saying nothing. Oh my god, she's eating herself! Ugh. It's like, there's that um that famous painting that's got like the face made of fruits and vegetables and stuff. This is this lady. It was a small mouse-like thing with pointy ears, a long tail, and a slit across its belly. She tossed it into her mouth. They taste like chicken! If you catch one, I'll let you eat it! Is it supposed to be Australian? <laughs> the kangaroo and the g'day? All right, I have to rethink this voice entirely. Good day, my name is Luru Brown. Guru Luru to you. She had an accent from Didgeridoo. <laughs> is, is anyone offended by this? She had an accent from Didgeridoo. A hot land full of beaches and unusual animals with strange names. It's like baby's first continents. Boo bake take deep dish pizza pie. <laughs> it's just it turns cockney. <laughs> Mrs. Love it's meat pies. Next, Lauro appraised the likeys. All four girls stuck out her to their tongues and Lauro frowned. Sugar free breath mints? They are our favorites, they said down the line. We su suck one each. All right, I, I feel like this is get, it's getting offensive, right? Room temperature, slightly decaying, puzzling, very much Darrow food, mate. Darrow means homeless in the didgeridoo dialect. <laughs> it 
This sounds stupid when you read it out loud, huh? <laughs> she smelled de delectable whipped cream. What does whipped cream even smell like? I don't remember whipped cream having a smell. About a hundred cans of different kinds of whipped cream. Heavy cream, light cream, vanilla cream, all spewing their contents into the air. Gumbo shrimp. <laughs> Battered shrimp. Coconut shrimp. <laughs> The perfect blend of acidity and sweetness, she said about Kamalani's samosas. Tyra just wanted to describe food for a while. Dylan closed her eyes and slowly relished every bite of Boo Big Teak pie, laughing like a lunatic after each smile. <laughs> Chase slurped in the pomegranate juice. <laughs> Serpessa sucked her entire face into a brew of fish chunks. <laughs> the vats then crashed to the floor and morphed into elevators, one per girl. What is going on at any point in this book? The elevator doors opened, revealing a bank of goop group showers in a shiny facility of chrome and translucent surfaces, but the liquid spurting from the nozzles was anything but clear. The smell tickled Tukey's nostrils, lovely scents filled the air, caramel, boysenberry, and this is just Willy Wonka's factory. This is just the chocolate waterfalls. Like, Tyra's gonna get sucked up like Augustus Gloop. <laughs> Go for the gold! She's giving them golden showers? Excuse me. We need to talk, ladies, Lauro said quietly. You're restricting nutrients to your Bella Belly needs. When you want help, I hope you give me a bill. When Guru approached Dar- This is the right way to approach eating disorders, right? Like, the girls all around the world learn so many lessons. <laughs> okay, Zalpesa, I must admit, with all rue respect- Excuse me, does she think- Does she think- <laughs> This is how Australians speak. With all rue respect, you have to, like, add rue in front of words. She never met an Australian in her life. Uh, sorry, a didgeridoo and... I haven't guzzle guzzled like that in I don't know how long, really. And anyway, how can you blame me? I was starved. Laro gave her an I know better look. So this is what they're giving to the plus size model? This is a reminder, Dylan is the plus size model. She's a shoveler. Cause she loves food. Those lolly-headed leading ladies restrict as well. All right, enough with the, why the actress thing? Why the act, everyone is talking about actresses. This projection from Tyra Banks. Is she just jealous because her acting career didn't really become much of a thing? Is that what's going on? Why? Worse than models in my rue opinion. In my rue opinion. Here's a little present from you to me. The gift of renewed appetite. You know, so hungry you could eat the ass out of a low-flying duck. I'm gonna say this in the non-falsetto voice, really emphasize what I just read. So, she's get, she's made them hungry again. The gift of a renewed appetite. You're now so hungry, you could eat the ass out of a low-flying duck. The thing about eating disorders and modeling, it's a real thing, obviously. We all know this, um, that this is a, a problem in the industry, and it's good to, uh, you know... Uh, bring to light healthy eating, you know, what to eat and not just starving yourself. Um, but the way that Tyra approaches this is not great. It's it's inane. All of it's inane. So it just makes it seem uh, borderline, borderline disrespectful. Because <laughs> Tyra's not really lived in the real world for a very long time. So she doesn't know how to address these things. An upper class Bella approached the eats wall and spoke into a large pair of lips. You guys know in Mystery Science Theater that like Santa Claus movie and he looks into space and there's these talking lips and stuff. That's what that makes me think of. That is a mouth, isn't it? Enjoy, ladies. Dine. Appreciate. But please, try to find balance. She didn't teach them anything, though. She just gorge, had them gorge on food and then just went like, here's some stuff. Find a balance. Bye. Just then, a loud collective coo erupted from the other Bellas. Coo hoo Sexified succulents, someone cried. <laughs> the girls began frantically tapping the glass. Webb and Alexander noticed the girls and smiled, waved, and licked their lips. Mm -hmm. Chapter 22, Fused Flashback Females. I was just about to flash my... I don't want to read this line. I don't want to read this line. I don't want... In a, in a book with many terrible lines, I think this might be the worst so far. <laughs> Alright. I was just about to flash my breastosterose. Why? <laughs> Why is Tyra Banks like this? Ho, we're gonna make a fashion. 
Oh, make a fashion. She's gonna rebrand herself as Banks, B-A-N-X, Banks. That ain't happening. The smell of blood oranges wafted through the air. Yes, lest we forget that blood oranges is Tyra's favorite scent. So all of Model N smells like blood oranges. It's one of my favorite scents. I too feel quite uncomfortable with the idea of getting disrobed while so many look on. Kamalani seconded. Natural dialogue. Tuki didn't want to get naked around all these people either. Why are we doing a naked chapter? Lie down on the last three slabs there. The mannequin instructed flatly, pointing. Oh my gosh, they're going to get probed. Dozens of hands came up from under the slabs and removed their clothes. These are these are underage girls. She wanted this to be a movie. How would you you wouldn't film any of this? You couldn't film any of this. This is they say that the Watchmen they, they said that the Watchmen was unfilmable. This is unfilmable. Watchmen ain't got shit on this. They gave them periods and stole them away. They gave them periods and stole them away. And now they're getting them naked. What is, what is this constant violation going on here? Can you imagine if they did something like this on on top model though? Can you imagine? If they like just like undress them without their consent and took their periods away, what's that about? Water rushed up at them as well, seemingly gushing from the surface of the stone. The bidet. Environment inside a whipped cream factory with beach waves crashing outside the window. You know, Tyra sticks with some uh, with some themes, with some ideas. Yeah. Tuki is in love with whipped cream. In another treatment room, a mannequin was peeling a layer of skin off of Abella's face. The skin came off in a perfect mask, pigment pores and all, and then the mannequin pressed up against a plastic molded head. The mask opened its eyes and smiled. This is like Suspiria or some shit. Facial slough, the yellow mannequin guiding the girl said, and in yet another room, a belt- You can't just skim over that, you can't just be like, mm, anyway. So Tyra just thought if every chapter was just a new class or describing a building or a room or whatever, like that that would make up a whole 569 page book. You don't have to actually have a plot happening. You just describe like going to places, going into rooms and they're all made of stupid stuff or smell and dumb and then and then the girls go, "Ah," and then leave. It is so, the female said. It's a flashback female sound like, It is so! She blinked slowly and opened her eyes. She's she's that, uh, that reaction gif of that guy from that stream, just... Kamalani pointed to the window. Right outside are so many people with so much less. And that big group of people the young me is greeting right now, they are the Pondy family. This is Tyra Banks, like, she's like, I look out from my castle and I feel bad for all of the poor. Guess what? Young Kamalani cried to the family. I actually secured parts for all of you in my mother's next film. The heavy sky blue backdrop tipped and plummeted to the ground. Oh my god, is there going to be another terrible accident? Maya crawled out from under the rubble, blood streaming down her forehead again with the violence every time. <laughs> Ma, Papa, Nani! Tuki's heart stopped. She had a sinking feeling about what had just happened. Oh, they were crushed under a house like the Wicked Witch. So, like, did they get to choose the flashback? Or is it just they're like, I'm gonna pick your most horrific? Kamalani crumpled to the floor in tears. They all perished that day because of me! <laughs> it's almost as bad as Neil is bowing into a sword. I should have never tried to help them. Never try to help people. That's the lesson that we learned today. <laughs> A man and a sweet looking girl about six years old stood next to a jungle gym. The little blonde girl was Dylan's sweet feisty face. Had Dylan's sweet feisty face. But not like, you know, the facial sloth. She, they didn't peel it off. It was actually like on a person. Just to clarify. Dylan, my baby. Daddy's little girl. Daddy's gonna have to go somewhere far away very, very soon. And before I go, I just want to make sure I say something to you that I want you to remember always. He cleared his throat. <coughs> These other little skinny things in the nation, don't ever let them get you down. Suddenly, Dylan's father started to cough. <coughs> he seemed unable to catch his breath. Oh, this is the this is the dying cough. You know that they're on their way to the great beyond. <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. His face became bright red, and then he dropped to the ground. What? He just immediately died. <laughs> Immediately, 
he's like, I, I gotta go away for a while. Don't worry about me. <coughs> In seconds, a boo big teak ambulance roared up. An EMT stumped out and loaded Dylan's father into a stretcher. Surely they would put him in a cart. A few moments later, the girls returned to the ooh-ah. <laughs> oh, that was it. Cool flashback. And if you refuse, I'll have to mark your time in ooh-ah as incomplete. Ooh-ah is a class as well, you see. Oh, so they have to be traumatized for class for a grade. You got an A in trauma. Tuki felt like her brain was being turned upside down and inside out. But it wasn't painful at all. Instead, it felt like her head was being relieved of pressure, like a tea kettle whistling out steam. <laughs> Tuki stared at her two-year-old self. She was actually strangely cute. Oh, so she she could at least at least I wasn't an ugly baby. I still had two different colored eyes, like a freak, but I was cute. Then both parents gave baby Tuki a gentle kiss on her forehead. Mwah, mwah. Tears fell down from Tuki's eyes into her green terry cloth ooh -ah dress. <laughs> Sleepy, huh, Dumplin? I know. I see you fighting it. Mr. De La Creme said as he kissed little Tuki's toes. Ugh. I guess this must be a different time. There's just like a gap. And then the next page starts. There's no like break or anything, so I don't know. I'm guessing this is a different time. They're not still there? He embarrassed me, Lizzie reaching toward his nose to indicate that I should wipe away some vile olive-tinted whipped cream snot in front of everyone. He, She's mad he embarrassed her for telling her she had shit on her face? What the fuck is this about? Because tonight, I ain't half bad. And I'm praying that wherever you are, you ain't half bad too. I miss you, hot queen. Have you ever seen uh, read a line more touching in a book than I miss you, hot queen? Iconic. P.S. I hope you're staying far away from sharp rocks. P.S. I thought I would mention your self-harm at the end here. Chapter 23, The Diabolical Divide. After them, none other than the hairy Abigail Good, her t dot head injury having healed, and her even hairier mother, who was appropriately named Harriet. The Good women carried duffels that sported hairy sewn-on patches promoting their pro-hair causes. Shut up! Why has everyone just got one thing in their life? So are these the people that have, uh, that have, uh, journeyed? They've made the pilgrimage, uh, over the mountain, um, to try and get to Model Land without being invited? A final figure emerged from the darkness, their guide, a professional trespasser or raider named Macy Kamada. He wore a... Oh, okay. He wore a large pack crammed with survival gear. This I like this guy. The professional trespasser raider. He opened one of the breast pockets on his... Don't they mean breast ostero pockets? Kamada stuck a needle into his rock hard butt, <laughs> injecting a thick murky liquid. Something very funny about, about using the word butt, isn't it? This is my entire life savings. Please promise that you'll deliver us to Model Land safely. Guys, it ain't worth it. Look, we've been spending quite some time reading about Model Land. It ain't that great. But you can call me Creamy. And this is my daughter Miracle. Honey, stop dancing, please. Dun dun dun. Fan favorites return. You see, now something's happening. I'm excited. I'm it's a plot's happening. Something that 286 pages in they decided should be going on. Creamy turned Bellissima over and exposed, exposed her hard plastic rear end. Give her a shot too. Why? Why though? Why? What am I- what are we even reading though? I ask this a lot, but like- You probably can't believe it, but I've been in model land for three whole months. What have they been doing for three months? For three months they've just been eating and going to ooh-ahs and- through zippers, if she learned anything useful whatsoever? But I've got a secret. I like it here. Why? Why does she like it there? They, she, they've presented nothing appealing about this place. Everything has been just pure horror. In each runaway, cara cara cara, and mastication class, I get it together just a little bit more. Is that the only classes? The three genders! <laughs> Going on a runway, uh, showing faces, and eating. <laughs> Gust gape. A class on how to keep your eyes open, even in extreme winds. Oh, okay, there are more classes, but they're stupid. They managed to hold out even in a hurricane. When are you going to be modeling in a hurricane? Chapter 24. W-O-W. Wow. 
our most unusual tale, picks up at the start of the next model and quadmester. Three mo- oh, so we have a time jump now. They spent so much fucking time on every single second of boring ass detail of what they were doing seemingly in real time she went to sleep she woke up she went to this class she did this this person did this this person did this this person did this and now 289 pages in we do a time skip you give us this you 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 grace us with this gift tyra good luck with your manly man stuff she said flippantly oh how three months at model land have changed her then he laughed uncomfortably, shaking loose bark and dust from the tree limb. Ha ha ha. Then Bravo lightly patted Tuki's hair clean of dust and gingerly plucked a piece of small a piece of a small shard of wood stuck in her bottom lip to her bottom lip. He removed the last traces of chipped wood, but his thumb lingered between her lips and made slight contact with her tongue. Tuki wanted to bite down hard on his hand to teach him a lesson to not touch her like that, but instead she closed her lips on his thumb, locking it inside her mouth, her body betraying her. What? How do you... I remember this from uh, the uh, America's Next Top Model uh, reenactment of Model Land, and then she like sucks on his thumb. But how do you accidentally do that though? How do you accidentally do that? That's gross. See, this is not a normal thing. This is not- this is just a weird Tyra thing. No one accidentally does this. No one does this because they're horny. No one does this. <laughs> His thumb entering my mouth. Yum. I mean, yuck. Was it all just a joke? Or something more? Yum? 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 Oh, a random M is back. How- what- what determines when an M is gonna, like, be on a page? What determines that? For the first time in Model Land history, the entire class had to partake in an impromptu remedial class on the workings of the Kaleido Clock Timekeepers. You know, you wouldn't have to teach them all this if you just told time the normal way. Tuki was going to wow. War of Words, too. The War of the Worlds! They did a radio show of uh, Model Land and then people thought it was real and it was it freaked everyone out. One night, Sarpessa had used her centura to make Tuki's hand-drawn image on her bedspread attempt to strangle her. What? I'm sorry, we're just, just as an aside, there was an attempted murder? Tuki had had to punch her own image in the face, knocking her be bed sketch out cold. What is, what is Tyra on about with this? What if it had succeeded in killing her? Be like, Sarpessa's just a murderer. It kind of reminded her of what Creamy had said about Wingtip. Wise old Wingtip. Don't forget, wise old Wingtip. Suddenly, she felt a tugging sensation in one of her back right molars. Something dislodged from her tooth and shot out of her mouth before she could stop it. Clank, a piece of metal slammed against the wall. It just took... It just took the thing out of her tooth. Her fillings got ripped out. That's what happened. That's what happened, guys. If you're confused, you're like, oh, I must have misheard. No, that's what happened. Other girls began to lose pieces of metal from their bodies. Like, oh my god. I'm, one of them's gonna have like a metal hip or something. A plate in their head. It's gonna shoot out. Baby Anna lost a pair of stud earrings. Oh, just ripped out. Ugh. Tuki felt a pull at her chest. My pacemaker. <laughs> ah. A troll of a man entered. He was balding on the left side of his head as he walked like a seal scoots when on land. Everyone is here. Yep, yep. Very good. Very good. His voice was nasal and high-pitched. Oh, high-pitched. Everyone is... Everyone is here. Nasal and high-pitched. <laughs> everyone is here. Yep, yep. Very good. Very good. I liked my voice better. I'm just gonna use my voice. I don't care what she says he sounds like. He's Danny DeVito. He proceeded to scoot walk toward Chase, stumbling over his own feet. He's- I'm imagining, like, Danny DeVito, but, his, but he's being turned into the walrus from Tusk. He laughed like an out-of-breath hyena. <laughs> Bravo was coming up all sorts of ways that day. She thought again about his thumb in her mouth, trying to make sense of what had happened. Yeah, we're all trying to figure that one out. Was there something she should have done differently? Yeah, not sucked on his thumb. This is war of words. In your previous lives, you may have called it debate. But we call things stupid things here. 
So now it's war of words. We could have called it debate, but we didn't. Do you wish to debate the merits of different types of hammocks? Kind of. Chase seductively twir twirled a piece of hair around her finger. Hammocks for honkers. She has the worst line. She's the worst. My nobbies pert and firm agree, but forever young they will not be. No bra they'll sag with gravity. Today, CL is returning to her roots to be a first year Bella on no sea. Persimmon, is all of this necessary? Guru Matt Joe asked, looking pityingly at CL. This is what we've been asking this whole time. Wow, the famed Intoxabella is slumming it with the no -sees. Tuki whipped around, filled with rage. Yeah, well, you're no stranger to slumming it yourself. She snapped before she could stop herself. Uh-oh, Tuki thought. You've done it now. I think if Zarpessa attempts to murder her, like, it doesn't really matter if she tells her secret or not. You two will argue about eight, that atypical features are superior to conventional beauty. Oh, because they gotta point out how ugly she is all the time. This might be the only time Tuki would be able to tell Ciel her feelings. And so she took a deep breath, stared into CL's green eyes, and began to speak in her own special way. Sometimes I'm confused. Sometimes I'm proud of you. And often I think you are deeply troubled, perhaps even mentally ill. But mostly, I tend to think the latter. It's nice that young Tyra is uh, kissing the ass of old Tyra. <laughs> Sarpessa says that she has no idea why my friends and I are here at Model Land. It's not like I have a clue either. I know people here see a midget and a whale and a ghost. Midget? And a whale and a ghost and a freak of nature? Is it a whale? And a ghost? Mean. From one unfortunate looking girl to one unquestionably ravishing one, Tookie de la Creme. Oh, everyone's so inspired by the speech she gave. This is like where the music swells and the inspirational part of the movie comes in. Real uh, Dead Poet Society moment. Yo, listen to me right now, Dylan yelled, trembling. There may be different types of girls in this room from different countries all over this damn different world, but you'll have one thing in common, and I refuse to stand here and state the obvious. This is her, her big moment. This is her big moment. Tyra's standing up for the plus-size models out there. This is so disingenuous. Well done, my dear. Tuki, you have won your first war of the words. <laughs> she didn't even argue for the thing she was supposed to argue about. All she did was read a letter. I feel like you would lose debate if you don't even cover the topic. Macho ignored her and pressed a button under his stool. All the jewels and other metal par paraphernalia stuck to the wall crashed to the floor. The likey- what was the point of that? What was the point of the, the metal? I forgot that. What did that have to do with debate? The girl scrambled up the ladder after her and entered a hallway that smelled strangely of wet fur. Is the girl- oh my god, is it happening? Can't walk corridor! Shiraz screamed. And that was when the first set of claws ripped into Tuki's flesh. What? Why do we even need Harry Potter? Why do we even need Harry Potter? We have the new Harry Potter right here. We just gotta get Tyra to release the other two books in the trilogy. Um, and then everyone can identify like which, um, which model land class is their house. I would be mastication. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. Chapter 25. One biatch. Three H's. Tuki grabbed hold of her ankle and felt a warm flow of blood trickling to her foot. Oh, right, the, the cat attacked her. She got attacked, sliced into her flesh. <laughs> Something furry and blurry moved in the darkness. And then suddenly a shining claw reached out again and struck her mouth. Rip. What? Oh, I hate this. Who's saying this? As her eyes adjusted to the dim hallway light, she saw hundreds of eyes staring back at her. Night of a thousand cats. When the cats are hungry, run for your lives. Two striped animals with amber eyes slinked out of the shadows, stalking Tuki, Shiraz, and Piper. <laughs> <gasps> There's one now! Their fuchsia-painted claws <laughs> extended like switchblades. They hissed and spat in unison. <laughs> 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 As Tuki peered more closely, a strange realization came over her. This was no ordinary feline. Its face looked human. Oh my god, its face was human, so it was like what we do in the shadows when he's got the cat face. It's Cats the Movie! No! She's a jellicle cat! Memories! 
when Monoland peeled some faces off and some cats were talking to her and we were really scared <laughs> cuz Tyra is a jellical cat did it did it my cat was getting into something take one of these the skinniest of the cats extended its paw to Piper, revealing a round pill that gr glowed green. Eh, got some pills for ya. Don't take pills from cats that you don't know. <laughs> All the cats laughed. <laughs> Can you imagine the cats laughing? <laughs> hey, you. It was the scrawny hairless sphinx. Want one? She offered Tuki a pill. Hey, hey kid, you, you want some drugs? You want some drugs? Want some drugs? <laughs> Suddenly, a light illuminated the mysterious being. It was an oversized lion's face. It's Aslan! The catwalk corridor was created as a correctional facility for you to reverse your abominable behavior to be domesticated. In Model Land, catwalk corridor is where all the bad intoxibellas, otherwise known as supermodels, get sent and they get turned into cats. There is room for only one biatch. <laughs> She made the last word sounded like an extended pissed off meow. I don't, I don't what human being what human being wrote this and then and then read it back and they're like this is so good this is so good after all the cats vanished, the lion opened its mouth even wider and extended its tongue out like a cushy red carpet. Its ta jagged teeth dripped saliva and its hot breath blew through the girl's hair. Take only the lamp! <laughs> what in the hell was that? Tuki whispered. <laughs> I feel that. 26. The porcelain pact. Oh no, is this like the porcelain throne? Are we gonna get some toilet stuff? I made a pee pee. Made a pee pee, mommy. The girls walked into Dylan's room and found I likey, me likey, she likey, and her likey all in one bed. That's racist. Dylan was crouched over the toilet moaning. Her hair hung down, obscuring her face. Oh, so instead of like funny stuff, we're just gonna go into eating disorders. Nobody tiny here like me either, Dylan. Shiraz said softly. Not the time, Shiraz. And last I looked, Piper said, I was playing solo for the Albinism Model and World Cup. We're all freaks, idiot. Dill, we all have our- don't call her Dill. Dill, we all have our stuff, Tuki said quietly. Oh, shut up. I got two different colored eyes. <laughs> I have it so hard. True friendship is about being really vulnerable, about sitting around a toilet and, uh, I don't know, letting loose. <laughs> sitting around a toilet, th talking about model stuff. I feel like this is the episode of Beverly Hills 90210 when, like, they have a sleepover and then there's the one bitchy girl who makes everyone feel bad and reveal all of their secrets until they find out that she has, that she has an eating disorder and she's taken, like, diet pills and that's why she's so mean and then they're friends by the end. <laughs> Tall my parents were! Both of them! She's Yoda. Tall my parents were! Papa and I, we best friends! He called me his runt! Peanut! Dwarf! Preemie! Affectionate! He said it was! Ah, oh, preemie! Ah, oh, dwarf, my little preemie dwarf. <laughs> I love you, preemie dwarf, peanut runt. <laughs> Papa die too, but not from sick. Die from broke heart. Oh, Dylan probably relates to that. Her dad just t t croaked right in front of her after giving his sad speech. Died from a broken heart like, like Amidala. Uh, Luke, Leia. Uh. Dylan turned to Tuki. Your turn, okay? Yeah, you have to give us the trauma, okay, girlfriend? I write letters to people in this book, she said, settling down next to the girls and opening the book. Just, could they, like, clean up the puke or something before they start getting into all this? It's gotta smell super bad. It's all in Dylan's hair and shit. I feel so guilty, Dylan said, breaking the silence. Piper and Shiraz reached into Tuki and hugged her tightly. Tuki's got to take it all for herself. All the moments hers now. I'm just, I'm just getting sick of Tuki. I'm getting sick of Tuki. <laughs> 323 pages in, I'm getting sick of Tuki. 
But as she hugged all three girls, she got a twisting pang deep in her heart for Lizzie. She missed Lizzie so much. When she started talking about twisting pang, I thought they were bringing their periods back or something. Anything could happen. You know, I think a group needs a name. Dumbledore's Army. <laughs> How about the Crapper Sisters? Dylan joked, looking at the soiled toilet and disgusting floor they were all sitting on. The Crapper Sisters. What about the Unicas? The Unicas? No, she she pronounced it Unicas. She she let me know. The Unicas? Shut up. Shut up. That waterfall of blood flowing from your lips needs a stitch or two. Or twenty. Oh yeah, she's just covered in blood this whole time? They're just covered in blood and fluids? Like, now's not the time for this girlfriend moment. As long as I can watch that cat pee on Zarpesa one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 27. Z. Come on! 33.4 seconds is all it takes us. Well, why is she using numbers and not colors? It takes the purple blue seconds. So when you do this go see go, you're gonna be you, right? Tuki said, not CL. Because if you knew the real CL, I don't think you'd be so fixated on her. <laughs> what, what was that? She gave that whole big speech and there's like, you don't wanna be CL. Ugh. She wore an elaborate sage green cape made of multiple types of pistols, knives, nooses, and razors. Ma'am, you called me ma'am? Oh no, you should never call me that. My name is Purse Dress to Kill. Purse Dress to Kill. At Model Land, I guess nurses are called purses, she realized. You should have seen that coming, Tuki. Is that what? Wait, is that not her first name? It's just purse, like... Nur that doesn't make any sense, though. You can't just change one word to another word and say it, this is fashion. You can't do this. If she hadn't explained that, I wouldn't understand that. I just thought that was her first name. Do you mind if I ask what you're here for? Tuki whispered to her. I do mind! The girl flashed Tuki the diagnosis sticker on her arm. Flooding pants. Like flood pants? So this girl's sitting there and then her pants just flood with water. This is a thing that she needs to go to the nurse for because her pants keep filling up with water. And then the purse has scooped her up in the drama trauma center. I just, like, nothing means anything anymore. Tuki surveyed the rest of the chaotic waiting room. Things are about to get stupid, guys. Across the aisle was a girl with blackened eyes and foul-smelling dark puffs of exhaust coming out of her sockets. Smoky eyes, her armband red. Ah, oh, these are all... These are all model dad jokes. Does that mean I'm dying? Not any faster than the standards of beauty, Missy, but you are suffering from BW. Boy withdrawal! There's a guy, right? Boy withdrawal. I'm sorry, I'm gonna read this in a normal voice so you understand exactly what's been said. But you are suffering from BW. Boy withdrawal. There's a guy, right? Boy withdrawal. Very heteronormative, this book. Boy withdrawal. Boy withdrawal. <laughs> So she's physically ill because she has boy withdrawal. I feel so fucking insulted by this whole thing. Dr. Erica clucked her tongue. Everyone's clucking their tongues in this. <laughs> Tuki's heart did a flip. <laughs> All the girls in the waiting area let out sympathetic moans. <laughs> Tuki sat down on it and immediately sank into the mattress. The pillow rubbed against her mouth and she winced. What? How did the pillow... She, did she lay down? Just said she sat down. How did the pillow... It was a very tall pillow. The doctor lifted her, her pants leg and revealed that the skates were actually attached to her body. The same color and texture as her skin. We would be locked up and tested on without this place. If it weren't for Model Land, my kind and others would be... Like me, would be freaks. So, this the Model Land's so obsessed with beauty. And, like, they're such freaks. But then, like, they brought in all the freaks. 
to be instead of experimented on to work in, in model land it was a blessing for my kind because the powers that be at Model Land recognized that skates for feet would be put to good use in emergency medical situations. No, it wouldn't. When I first saw you, I thought you were an injured new guru, not a Bella, especially with how you helped that sad, desperate girl. Plus, with your. So she thought she was so freaky with her different colored eyes, she must be one of those, like, roller skate people type freaks. What? Come on. Come on. It's ridiculous. So I quickly realized my assumption was wrong when I saw you were with Piper. This voice sucks. But before I stitch you up, I want to give you some stronger said med. Lips have a lot of nerve endings, pleasure and pain ones. The doctors, I'd be careful around her mouth. She might accidentally suck her thumb and get turned on by it. Do you have Zordor at testosterone? Maybe this was the Z effect, she realized. The Zed med zed up your speech. Bravo smiled. You hungry, huh? Or should I say zongry? Fucking funny. Tuki smiled sloppily, ripped off the top of one package, and tried to bite the treat. It landed on her cheek. I mean, surely she can- I mean, you don't- You know where your mouth is, even if it's numb. Could she actually like him? Gosh, she just goes on forever. I'm gonna regret this costume choice. Immediately. I'm a shark. I'm a shark. I'm a shark. I'm a shark. Doing the shark dance. Bum, 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 bum. Chapter 28, The Three Decrees. What happened at the end of the last chapter? Oh, she got- oh. Pfft. Ugh, I sleepwalked again. Where the hell- where the hell- where the heck am I? I was swearing it up, but she's not a swearer. He brought something to his lips. A whistle? A weapon? I'm going back to Peppertown, Tukey thought. This is it. Gennaro smeared the mysterious item over his lips. <laughs> A stripe of red appeared. Lipstick! Oh my god, why all this build up for lipstick? The Belladonna let out a shriek. <coughs> but I'm over them. Abolish them now. Oh my god, the Belladonna. What a jerk. It's like, it just slowly keeps... Beep. I'm just a shark now. Gagging me like a horse while you pry my eyes open and make me watch old model land propaganda films for seven hours at a time while you drip saline in my eyes and so they don't dry out. And then Ben Stein's around like, for dry eyes, try model land. <laughs> or making me feel so crazy and deranged that I have to freeze my face onto a half-pleasant expression to hide the agonizing pain my body is truly suffering from every day. Ah, oh, ten years to get to every point. Everything goes on way longer than it needs to. That's how you get to 569 pages without actually having anything happen. <laughs> so much happens and yet nothing happens. <laughs> she thought of the protest signs in the square. It's all a sham, a phony exam! Were they right? It was foreshadowing! You thought they were just stupid signs. But Tyra done it again. Tyra did it again. You're not abolishing those girls. I want them. Why? The Belladonna's voice was laced with something that almost sounded like fear. Oh, sir. Why? Why do you want her? She's got two different colored eyes. Eh. What I did to those girls' bodies just might happen again. So she, she modified them? She did ex genetic experiments on the girls to get to make them ugly? Hmm. Tuki bit down hard on her tongue to keep from crying out. Experiment? Bodies? Sacrifice? Words? You hold up your end of the bargain, and I won't say a word about your, your little experiment either. How you replaced a worthy candidate with... Tuki de la Creme. Ba 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 ba! She's a sham, a fraud, an imposter girl, an imposta girl, if you will. Chapter 29, Flute Creepers. Her mom, uh, Creamy, and uh, her sister, The Miracle, uh, have embarked on the pilgrimage where they climb up the mountain uh, to try and get to Model Land. And uh, usually people die, but I'm gonna assume they're gonna make it, because otherwise, why are we even getting- But then again, uh, uh, Model Land asks us a lot why anything happens, so maybe, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe they won't make it. The pilgrims had been hiking for months! <laughs> They've been hiking for months, trying to get to that Model Land. Everyone, be I beg of you to get priorities. <laughs> By now, they knew that as soon as these winds kicked up, horrible creatures known as Tumble Terrors flew in with them. The Tumble Terrors! Woo! 
That sounds like like the least liked Stephen King book. The Tumble Terrors. I'm out of ideas. I don't know. The Tumble Terrors. The Tumble Knockers. <laughs> One of the pug-sized creatures that extracted a three-inch chunk from Abigail's mother's shaggy buttocks. She is a hairy butt? What in the world? What is this imagery we're going for? What is this imagery? She's got a butt chunk taken out. <laughs> a butt chunk. The brew protected them from harm somehow, allowing them to become spectators of the vicious action the storms brought on. I love, like, tires just like, somehow. Lynn had confessed to the group that Larsenina was the name of the Intoxibella with whom her husband was having a torrid affair, and for whom he had abandoned Lynn. Oh my gosh. She's going to get revenge on the Intoxibella that stole her husband. She didn't do it, but if she done it, you would have done the same. Meanwhile, the twisted, rabid, hunchbacked figure the pilgrims had named Hunchy <laughs> expertly spear- Hunchy? Oh, this, it's, it's, it's like it's written by Tyra at 16. Hunchy reached into the fresh gap in the torso, sifted through various organs that were still operating, and pulled out the pancreas. He then placed the entire bloody organ in his mouth. So this is a horror book. This is the thing I didn't really know about this. This is like literally a horror book. All of this stuff with the body horror and the violence and the gore. It's a horror book. But they don't tell you that you don't really expect like modeling and horror to be put together and certainly like it was not advertised that way. This is baby's first horror book for when like preteens read it and they're just like, oh. Oh, this is the spooky, this is the violent stuff. This is the stuff my parents won't let me watch on TV. <laughs> Are you friggling shticking me? Y'all, Jessamine, I promise. I promise this is what is written. <laughs> and no, I didn't write this book as a joke. This is a real thing that was published. It made the New York Times, because you can buy that very easily. This is the part where you were all, <laughs> where you all will... This is the part where you all will crap your pants. <laughs> Long silver plants that resembled musical instruments had wrapped themselves around the heads of the snoring pilgrims and were starting to enter their mouths. Flute creepers, Mrs. De La Creme whispered. Flute creepers are little instrument-like vine creatures that seep into their heads and go in the blue. <laughs> <laughs> they digested their victims slowly over a period of weeks, working from the bodies deepest interiors to their exteriors all while the victims remained alive but paralyzed feeling every bit of pain why wouldn't all of them be using tents i don't really understand if tents were an option why didn't anyone else bring a tent and why didn't the guide if he knew about this stuff bring a tent i don't really understand if that will protect you from the fluke creepers why you do why you wouldn't do this do we let them die, Creamy? Miracle said calmly, peering at the knocked out pilgrims. They're just, they're just murderers now. And then Creamy went around and saved all of the pilgrims. Oh, real anti-hero, Creamy de la Creme. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Chapter 30, D-Head and Dread. The four Unicas had been blithely sailing along at Model Land. U oh, Unicas, right. I forgot what the fuck that was. Would D-Head be more appropriate? The shape of your head reminds me of the D. <laughs> no, Tuki. I mean D-Head in a good way. Does he? It's my favorite building here. I love Uncommon Beauty, and the D is a perfect example. What the fuck is he on about? Your lips look perfect, <laughs> Bravo said, eyeing Dr. Erica's handiwork. No swelling, nothing. They look right for your first kiss. Ew! Ew, 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 Who says that? Who says that? They look right for your first kiss? Ew! First the thumb sucking and then this? Don't like it. And yet when she peeked up at Bravo, he was smiling at her expectantly, hopefully. Almost like he wanted to give Tuki her first kiss himself. What a creep! A gust of wind picked up, blowing around stray leaves from the bushes. A leaf landed on Tuki's bottom lip. Smiling, Bravo reached out to brush it away. His thumb touched both of her lips, then entered her mouth a bit. No, not with the thumb sucking again. Why? Why is this a recurring thing? Ew. He removed the last traces of leaf. What a weird thing to happen. A leaf blew under her lip and then he's br brushing the leaf away and then she's sucking his stuff. This is all very strange. 
Her knees wobbled. Her heart started to flutter, and she felt a warm gush through her core. <laughs> it's just pee. I made a pee pee, mommy. Try not to suck on his thumb again. Try not to suck on his thumb again. Try not to. Please, restrain yourself. You have such pretty eyes, Bravo whispered. They're a mixture of chocolate and mint. <laughs> Uh, this looks like this is gonna get steamy. Okay, so look up the the Model Land theme song. Just Google Model Land theme song and then play it for ambiance. You're gonna want some ambiance for this, some romance, if you will. Tuki made a face. Yuck! I hate chocolate. He complimented her. Eyes. She goes on forever. She goes on for fucking ever in every chapter about how she's such a freak because of her stupid different colored eyes. And he comp the one person compliments her eyes. And she's like, mm, chocolate. I hate chocolate. In some ways, she wished Creamy could see her now. She wished everyone at B3 could see her too, even though they never did. Oh my god. You know, you just found out about ex body experiments and a big conspiracy. No, it's like, oh, there's a boy. Your boy likes me. He touched the side of Tuki's face as if she were clay and he were a sculptor. <laughs> Turning into into ghost or uh, that, that music video for uh, Lionel Richie's Hello. But then CL's horrifying words popped into her head again. I have to go, she said, turning away. Wait up, I... Bravo cried, but Tuki pushed past him before he could finish his sentence. She felt his eyes on her and she darted farther down the hedge, but she didn't turn back. Oh, thank God. Saved by the experiments. How old is she supposed to be at this point? 15? 16? I mean, I realize teenagers kiss. How old is he supposed to be? This is what I'm wondering. This is what I'm wondering about these two. Maybe it's because I'm just imagining in my mind that he's the same age as when Tyra had uh, Tyson Beckford play him in her, in her little fantasy top model world. Unicas, there's only one thing to do. We have to escape. There was a long pause. Excuse me. And then I burped. I will do anything not to get tortured, Dylan said, even if it means going back to work in customer service. Oh, that's, that's, Tyra's never worked customer service in her life. I got a big mouth, T Dylan volunteered. Yes, you do, Shiraz teased, opening her mouth wide. I can distract people, Dylan said. This is not very helpful, Dylan. Dylan said, popping Shiraz playfully on the mouth. What? 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 Popping with what? With the hand? With the lips? With the... How did she pop her? What am I good at? Uh, the linguist? She volunteered. Yeah, it's the fact she can speak 15 fucking languages. I guess that's a skill you could use. <coughs> Chapter 31. Despairing Desperation. Oh, these titles just keep getting better and better. One week passed, then another. And yet Tuki could still could not think of a plan that would get her and the other Unicas away from Model Land safely. Oh, so they just spent a couple- they're like, yeah, we formed the army, and then they're like, I don't know, I didn't have- I tried nothing, I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> Maybe we can escape through the emergency zip-zap to Miitopia, Tuki whispered to the Unicas. It took her two weeks to think the emergency exit was an option. The dumb leading the dumb here. Would they hide the zip zap, no? Shiraz asked. True, Tuki said, pulling in her bottom lip. Well, guess her plan's foiled. According to the still somewhat confusing Kaleido clock on the wall, she'd been lying awake for four and a half hours. Oh, I think she means four and a half oranges. <coughs> <coughs> I know, Tyra came to force choke me. <coughs> I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Someone's on the run. Tuki caught sight of her face. It was Desperada. Desperada. Quit trying to escape model land. There's a guy with a head hand. And eating classes. When she reached the wall, she turned around and began to scale it nimbly, climbing on the j the objects jutting out like a narrow staircase. I feel like this is going to be like a like a piggy in a Lord of the Flies scenario here. All of you who've left your boyfriends back at home are idiots. Do you know what they're doing with the other girls? Other girls who are jealous and wish they were you? Boyfriend withdrawal. She needs that boy. She looked at all the girls' faces and then jumped down to the other side of the wall. Everyone screamed! Waiting for some awful explosion or a monstrous roar. Did they think she's full of C4? 
Oh my god, Tuki whispered. Desperata's face looked as though it belonged to someone of almost 70, not a girl of 15. Who cares? Oh, look, everybody. These four have crossed the aging barrier, too. No, wait. They're still young, but just naturally, disgustingly ugly. Oh, what? That Zarpessa's the living end, I tell ya. I'm ready for you, Zar Opressa. Tuki raised her fist as well, but they shook ever so slightly. <laughs> She's got, like, the old-fashioned fisticuffs. I'm ready, Zarpessa. Oh, it's really on now, big head. She yelled at Tuki over her shoulder. Big head, the language in this book. It's, it's good that this happened before they went over the wall. It's lucky they had Desperata sacrifice her youth uh, so that they didn't do it. The Bellas all screamed and ran wildly, looking for places to duck and cover. You think they had a class like that in Monoland, a duck and cover class? We can't leave this way, Tuki whispered, turning to ICL. We have to find another way out. This is a long way to get to, like, oh, that was a bad plan. Tuki selected a green pen from her journal and began to write in Oktoberfestian? You know, you could just say German. You don't have... They didn't... They could just say German. Every time there's a new name, it's dumber than the last. How... It's... You know what? <clears throat> I've underestimated how talented Tyra is at coming up with stupid names. It's a true talent. Chapter 32. There is no... Has never been and never will be. What? Even though everyone hadn't witnessed the incident, the plaza was still a Twitter with rumors and speculation. A Twitter! Mmm, that's a fun word, isn't it? A Twitter. They were a Twitter. Already, girls had placed bouquets of flowers and trinkets at the base of the wall to honor Desperata's memory. Come on! She just turned old! A handmade sign read, Desperata, forever young to us. Shut up! Why of all places are we going- are we being summoned there? Whatever it was, Tuki knew it wouldn't be good. Two columns of, like, the rest of this book. <laughs> then the eyes grew lips for top and bottom eyelids and began to sing in quavering but mellow- in a quavering but mellifluous voice. So it's like those, those, um, meme images. I meant meme-y, not- like, it's meme-ish, not meme -y, like I think meme is pronounced meme -y. It's a meme -y. It's- it's one of those memes where you put the, um, the eyes- the, the mouths for eyes. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. <sighs> this the fucking singing. Motherland was once a home, home, home. But foolish lust we don't condone, don't, don't. Now a cursed and cracked gemstone. I feel like a fucking jackass. Sing with me! The Belladonna shouted, Sing for me! In Model Land they sing for us these stupid songs. The Tuki of the opera is here. She won't shut up about her eyes. To what end is any of this? To what end? So you become a you become a an intoxabella, and then what do you do? You just you just go around scaring other models. Like why do people covet this? What? Because you get powers where you can just like do stupid things, like make people want to buy stuff. Like what was that about? But Madame Belladonna, even in the darkness, the voice was instantly recognizable. Zarpessa's voice continued. I don't think it's wrong to live for a man. Their intelligence is far greater than ours. It's our duties to submit and love and what? Who are we supposed to be, be rooting for in this situation? Who, who are we behind in this situation? So you would derail your life to be with a man. You would risk your face, your model land and talks about a future for that nonsense you call love. What if they're gay? What if they were in love with another girl? Was, would that be fine? What if they were pansexual? They're just like, whatever. Love, the Belladonna repeated, is an excuse to be stupid. <laughs> Stitch that onto a pillow. Love is an excuse to be stupid. What about my best friend, Gingy? Another voice asked, Gingy? It was this Shrek in the- What about my best friend, Gingy? I can't do- I'm sorry, that's a terrible Shrek. That's not a Shrek, is it? That's- well- Get out of my swamp! <laughs> Maybe I could do donkey. What about my best friend, Gingy? <laughs> Shrek, don't go. I'm sorry, but my time here is over. Chapter 33, The Mutant Music Monster. <laughs> Sounds like a, 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 like a book for grade schoolers. They'd all lost quite a bit of weight, their clothes now hanging off their bodies, the bones of their spines jutting out from under their shirts. They walked stiffly. How fucking big is this fucking mountain? A 
after the many near tragedies in the hands of our drowsy, irresponsible leader, I am now assuming control of this group. I am now the leader of the Decepticons. <laughs> okay, so they want a new leader. They think that, that he's not doing that. Kamada's not doing the job. Uh, so they pick the lady who's like, give give uh, give your um, immunity shot or whatever, your rabies shots or whatever to my doll. The lady who thinks her doll's real, that's the new leader you're going to choose? Let them go first, Miracle Dear. They've suffered more than we have. She nudged Kamada. Oh, something gonna happen. They gonna die. They gonna die in the water. They gonna die. The man said purest, not ugliest or hairiest, she yelled, stopping to tread water. Nothing pure about a friggling gorilla monkey suit, she yelled as she resumed swimming in the middle of the pond. Were all of them shaving then? Like, surely after months you're gonna have hairy legs no matter who you are, right? Or were they, they brought their, their razors with them, so even though they don't have the strength to walk, they're still like, I'm gonna shave my legs. Lights out, shining star, she murmured ominously. <laughs> She's the most obvious murderer in the world. A wave of bubbles swept across the pond. Things began to rise to the surface. Skulls. Thousands of them. Thousands of skulls! A muck-covered creature as tall as a giraffe! Its body was made of dozens and dozens of human arms, and its head was a mash of ancient musical instruments contorted into an evil, hungry-looking array of sharpened, sideways-turned symbols for teeth, hollow eyes made of tuba bells, and a steaming nose made of organ pipes. What in the world? Holy snikes! You know, of all the things I've heard about Model Land, this never came up. This never came up. Why is that? Why did no one bring up the big, the big music monster? The big music monster in the lake with thousands of skulls! But the monster scooped her up and took a large bite out of her torso, carefully avoiding her arms! No, Jessamine's mother wailed. She tried to fight the monster off from the shore with a stick, but it was like fighting a dragon with a toothpick. Useless, oh my god. It ate everything but her arms, just as it had done with her daughter. Ah! The monster carefully placed mother's and daughter's arms on its head, and they suddenly came to life, skillfully playing a haunting melody. What is the point of this, though? I don't understand thematically why any of this is happening, though. Why is, the, why is it musical based? Why is the music monsters? Touch miracle and you die. Oh my god. Creamy versus the pond monster. Whoever wins, we lose. Everyone was demanding this. They were like, first Freddy versus Jason, and now it's Creamy versus the pond monster. Chapter 34. The Mad Woman of the Model Land. Oh, that's Tyra. With her finger, she traced a single word onto the sheets. How? How? W-C-W. Okay, Tuki was elected the leader of Dumbledore's army here. And so far, the only plan she's come up with is no plan. She just said, like, maybe we'll scale the wall. And they're like, that's a bad idea. And then she's just written notes saying how to them. Like, you're the leader, dude. Tuki's bad at this. <laughs> in a dream, I was in a class and Tyra Banks was the was the teacher, and and it wasn't a class about Model Land. I don't know what the class was, but um, but she kept like trying to get us to watch her like mini series movie or whatever that was like nine hours long that was Model Land, and then she puts it on, and then I fell asleep in the dream, double sleep, and then I woke up. And it was still on, and it was like at night, and she's like, Yeah, you guys all agreed that you would stay late to finish watching this. And we all knew it was bullshit. We were so mad, and so we left, and we're all trying to find rides home. That dream Tyra trying to trick us. Her head and body twisted in opposite directions from each other. I can't do it, I'm not coordinated enough. Her feet were taking her to parts of the room where her eyes weren't looking. Her feet were taking her to parts of the room where her eyes weren't looking? Her arms flapped. If you'd let Poppy handle everything, we wouldn't be in this mess. Poppy handle everything? Tuki's skin prickled. Was Poppy Zarpessa's father? Poppy! Papa! Poppy! Did you handle this, Papa? Dookie's... Dookie... <laughs> 
<laughs> Dookie is that's what's our best called her. <laughs> Dookie. Dookie. <laughs> Dookie. The doctor said gratefully. Is there anything you know about this girl? Why would a doctor be asking about this? This is a, a, a patient confidentiality, man. Tell us her trauma in front of everyone. Tuki knew CL was right. She should have compassion and understanding even for an enemy. Anyway, this is what's going on and she totally is like poor and then is eating out of the dumpster. <laughs> Chapter 35, Deco. Bravo was looking more dapper than ever. Dapper! Dressed in spit-polished boots, testosterone everyday wear, and a cape-like coat with padded shoulders and six pockets running up the front. Well, it sounds stupid. Especially not fine, sexy tenders like Bravo. Sexy tender? He's a tender? Shiraz hooted. Woohoo! Bravo's lopsided grin snaked its way up the side of his face and right into Tukey's heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hurt my hand during a photo shoot on the roof, and I came here today because I needed to have my thumb sucked. Ew! Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> Tuki blinked at him. All of a sudden, she felt the urge to laugh. Or maybe cry. <laughs> it's like that little- that gif you see of the little boy being interviewed, like... <laughs> I open my mouth to say hi, and women damn near pass out or want to marry me. I'm not even, old, not even old enough to get into a club in Ladorno. Women always be swooning over him. He's sick of it. He just wants an uggo. He wants an uggo. <laughs> Two different colored eyes. That doesn't swoon and seems to have contempt for him. I know, I sound ridiculous. Like a conceited egomaniac. You said it. I didn't. Tyra's like, oh, I'm tired of these egotistical people talking about, about how beautiful and they don't see the real person they are inside. She's tired of people like that. Making it all about themselves. People swooning all over them. What a trial. Pretty people don't have trials. <laughs> says Tyra Banks, supermodel. You're different. You could care less about my outer shell. This thing I have absolutely nothing to do with creating. <laughs> said a human being. <laughs> then he shifted his weight. I want to tell you a story. Oh, please don't. A little boy named Deco wanted to be an architect. When he was six years old- <laughs> Deco? Like Art Deco? Come on, you st stupid. But no one paid much attention to Deco's beautiful work because there was something that was more striking than his creations. His face! We, we know it's you, Bravo. Shut up. The composer convinced Deco's parents to allow him to compose a whole symphony dedicated to Deco's face. <laughs> <laughs> One day he overheard a conversation between his heroes, two leading architects. <laughs> As you do, he was wandering around and he saw two architects that were his heroes and he overheard their conversation. The hero architects. The men spoke in hushed tones about the rumored gravity-defying stupendous architecture and design of Model Land. <laughs> he went to Model Land for the architecture? <laughs> And about how they were going to pilgrim up the mountain to view it up for themselves. Oh, they were gonna go for months and risk life or death, something no one ever came back from for the architecture. A real uh, high stakes, dangerous world of architecture. They speculated that the men had caught the first cases of the pilgrim plague for men. You could just say. This doesn't have to be one of those, like, um, deodorant deals where for men. You could just say they're the first men documented to catch the pilgrim plague. Which is weird, considering Bestosterone is like a brother model and academy. Apparently none of them felt- no one felt like they needed to run up to become a Bestosterbro. Model land for men! This is so intense, Tuki whispered. <laughs> Alright, man. Hi, Deco. Hi, Tuki. Bravo replied. Yeah, all right, what a, what a twist. What a twist! Hey, Tuki. Hey, Bravo. What's up, Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> Cut! He licked his thumb and then brought it to her eyebrow. Ew! Quit with the thumb and the licking in the mouths! Slowly smoothing the unruly hairs down as he smiled into her mismatched eyes. She sensed a gentle burning inside her stomach and her hips felt like they were being tickled even though Bravo's hands were nowhere near them. He got her pregnant with his thumb. I really like this, Juki. It feels right. I know I have to get out of here before you get in trouble, but I don't want to leave. And I don't want you to, she replied. You make me feel. A single tear fell from her brown eye. <laughs> like, like a remember girl. <laughs> you make me feel. 
You make me feel like a remember girl. Really? A remember girl? What's that? <laughs> what a touching moment this is. Tukey wrinkled her nose and shook her head. Am I really beautiful? You really are, Tuki. Beautiful. In a special, unique way. Like ugly. Tuki, I don't want anybody else to have you. No one will have you! Your first time should be special and tender. And it should be with me. <laughs> this guy says this to all of the girls in Model Land. He is fucking playing her. Don't fall for this deco bullshit. He tells them all the architect story. I'm just getting to know you. You're claiming my first time already? Yes, Tuki. Your first time. Your first... kiss. <laughs> Why would she mistake that for anything else? Idiot. I don't like this whole thing. This whole thing smacks of... of... icky. Smacks of... of straight. It doesn't even smack of straight. This is just abusive. It's what it is. Controlling. Don't... you don't do it. He wants to be my first. Me? I think once you sucked on someone's thumb, kissing is like, uh, like, whatever. Oh god, I promised myself to Theophilus. Well, who cares? Theophilus didn't fucking remember you. Who cares? Tuki ducked her head. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I can't wait to lose my... I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I can't wait to lose my... Lip virginity to you. <laughs> My lip virginity. I feel, I feel like I've gotten so dumb reading this. But I've always wondered, will people know afterwards? Will they be able to tell that I've done it? No one talks like this. Like nobody, nobody fucking cares. Nobody fucking cares if you kiss someone, Tuki. Stop it. We'll go on a magical ride down a secret zip zap that we hid under a new seven, the new 7-7 seven, seven stadium and land in the most beautiful fountain in Ladorna. <laughs> All right, so he's like, he's done this with several girl, girls now. Take him away for their first lip virginity loss kiss. Mm-hmm. Bravo knew where the emergency exit to Ladorna was hidden. Aw, oh, she's just espionage. She's got to find out about this hidden secret zip zap so that, it, so that she can escape with her friends. Tuki cleared her throat. <coughs> um, Bravo, can you show me where the secret zip zap is? So she's like, we'll be boyfriend and girlfriend, and she's just going to leave? Tuki was almost certain Bravo could smell the guilt wafting off her skin. CL's eyes were on Bravo, and her face was bright red. Get out! Do you know what happens to girls like you who break the rules? Do you know how much I want to kill you right now? I want to kill you! What do you who put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter? Dookie Potter, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? CL raised her arms in the air, and fabric covered in fire shot from her fingertips. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. She spent all this fucking time describing her Bravo and Tukey's most awkward lip virginity conversation and, and just a bunch of bullshit um, for like 10 million years. And then on the very last page of the chapter, she crams in fire shooting out of uh, her hands and, and shape shifting and, and an attack and all that, all this like just shoved in there in one page. You could have spent more time on this. Ho, we're gonna make a fashion. Ho. Make a fashion. Chapter 36, all hail Queen Creamy. She pointed her hairy arm toward a small, well-tended cemetery made up of six old polished marble tombstones with elaborate engravings. Oh, so there's just, there's just a cemetery all out there. The burial ground began to pulse. Kamado pull. This is like insane. Everything that's happening outside of Model Land is somehow more insane than normal Model Land. I didn't think that was possible. Defensive mode! Creamy ordered. So what What are they expecting is gonna happen, right? Okay, so let's say they get to Model Land. They're the first people who got there, and they're like, you made a mistake. What are they gonna do? Like, are they gonna be like, oh, you made it. I guess we'll let you in. Are they, 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 they're gonna do a hostile takeover? Are they gonna, like... It's like six emaciated, tired people? 
A primal scream rang out. I have taken your crap for too long, Abigail screamed, but I have had it up to here. The line must be drawn here, this far, no further. She began to scrape her body with it. A tuft of thick underarm hair tumbled to the ground. Oh, she's... Sh what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she... She's shaving herself. <laughs> she is taking a stand. A tuft of thick underarm hair tumbled to the ground. With lightning speed, Abigail shaved her sideburns, her arms, her most private parts. Oh my god, she's shaving a knife in her hoo-ha. That, no, don't do that. That'd be dangerous, yo. If she, she apparently has never shaved in her life or not shaved in a long time. She, she's gonna get razor burn. If she doesn't cut herself, you can't just go from that to a straight razor. What the hell is going on? Every trace of her hair, eyebrows included, was gone and lay in clumps at her feet. So they all sat there and watched as she shaved her entire body. Like, how many hours were they sitting there like, we just can't do nothing? Mom, I'm giving it all, minus the portions deemed inappropriate to hair for pitter-patter. Wait, so she shaved herself just to donate all of it except the, like, pubes to, like... She's gonna carry the hair stuff to like donate it? Like why didn't you just do it when you got there? Like you're gonna carry it around now? Abigail was not simply pretty. She was out of this world breathtakingly beautiful. Oh, this is the moment where the girl takes off like her um her overalls and her glasses to reveal that she was like she was traditionally uh, attractive the whole time. The source of the noise appeared. It was a spider-like creature three times the size of a Pepper Town city bus. But instead of eight legs, this creature had thousands. <laughs> and the legs looked human, so they just went from an arm monster to a leg monster. All right, but the originality is kind of gone there. Like, the, the novelty is worn off, Tyra. Now it's just stupid. Then it extended two of the legs on its body so that they stuck out farther than the multitudes of others and clicked them to <laughs> together. <laughs> clicked its feet together. I know how to save us, Creamy, Miracle yelled. Dancing! At last, she is become her calling. She proudly ran in front of the leg leech and began a rousing back and forth dance routine with Bellissima in her arms. Start spreading the news. I'm going to Mana Land today. I want to be a part of it with all these dogs. Run that way, Kamada. Kamada looked disoriented and ran straight into the flames, just as Creamy had instructed. In seconds, nothing of Kamada and Abigail was left. Not even Ash. What lesson are we meant to learn from any of this? <laughs> nothing. It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. Perhaps there is no moral to this story. Exactly! It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. Chapter 37, Man Attack and Heartache. Pure and prude Bellas, it's time to lose it. Your man attack virginity, I mean. Report. What? The, you can't just add virginity to things all the time. She has them talking in the same paragraph. You don't start with uh, Tuki said and then have CL finish out the paragraph. It's not how you write. The man attack is performed in one's underwear. Quit getting these underage people in, into nothing. I don't like it. Because you're freakazoid, unfortunate looking, water headed baby. Excuse me, I didn't expect a water-headed baby reference. Excuse me, no. Tuki versus Bravo. Ah, beans. They gotta fight in their underwear before they lose their kiss virginity. Their lip virginity, I mean. That'd be stupid if it's kiss virginity. As it has been played for eons, there are four phases to man attack. Oh, and we're gonna see them all in excruciating detail. First, the touch. Oh yes, contact people between man and woman. All right, you guys, grow up. Foundation for the girls, mandation for the boy. You don't have to call it mandation. Please, boys and girls, no strikes on the face or to the boys' nether, neither nether regions. No face, no crotch, but you have to go in Mortal Kombat for modeling. Sure. First theme, fitness battle, yoga versus karate. This is stupid. You I know I say this a lot. This is stupid. You both have opened new businesses next door to each other. Who refuses to go bankrupt? Oh, this is Cobra Kai. Spoilers. He pointed at Chaste. Well, she may be loose, but her game is tight. 
She may be loose, but her game is tight. Raw silk karate parachute pants came from the hole up above. Stretch pants and even yoga mats flew out of all the holes. Uh, this is like that challenge that uh, that label gives you. Labelle in um, an Animal Crossing. Come up with an outfit with a theme. And you get some tickets or something. Chase scores a point in my book, Gennaro commented. Picking kick ass over stretch ass. Oh god, this is gonna be insufferable. Go back to the monsters and stuff. Bravo, Tuki pleaded. I need to- Hold up, hold up. Bravo tenderly squeezed her hand. Now it's time for the makeup phase. Ugh, he's such an idiot. Controlling jerk. You have to be careful of those makeup bombs, though. They're actually called Maki Balls. Look! Makeup bombs? Is this like the, the makeup shotgun on The Simpsons? <laughs> Dad, women won't like being shot in the face. Women will like what I tell them to like. I'll tell you a little secret, too. You and me, kissing? It was nothing but a bet with my boys. I made a bet with Webb and Alex that I could get a funny looking girl to fall in love with me. The pretty ones, they're easy. But the weird looking ones, they're the ultimate challenge. How? How are they the ultimate challenge though? How? So I guess we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> she, she legit has that line in this. I guess we're not so different, you and I. Get out! Tuki screamed. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you, bravo. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Peace. He spun around and stormed away. Peace. The crowd began to recite the alphabet backwards. Z, Y, X, M, L, K. Day. His hunched posture made him look self-conscious in his couture man attack underwear. <laughs> Why would he be self-conscious in his couture man attack underwear, though? Bravo, you can steal my family jewels any day. Quit hitting on the kids. Creepo. Tuki brought her ruby braceleted arm behind her, clenched her fist, and hit Bravo in the face. Oh! Oh, she's gonna get a penalty. You can't do the face or the nuts, they said. There's another guy named Webb, but they're in the web? Who's Webb? Why is there so many webs? The lucky guy who will get to pucker with my suckers? <laughs> pucker with my suckers? And then he'll spray whipped cream straight into my mouth, and then his... <laughs> and then you part his mouth just a little and press his lips against mine. And for me, it will feel like the kiss will never end, because it won't. It'll go on forever, and it'll be amazing. I deserve better? Damn right I deserve better. And there's better than you, Bravo, believe it or not. Theophilus love laces. <laughs> the crowd fell silent, but suddenly from the wings, Arpessa let out a shriek. <laughs> How did the, how is anyone hearing any of this? This big stadium or whatever. So this is what a smize feels like. Oh, she's being drugged. She thought, feeling stronger, more powerful than ever before. Oh my god. He said, staring at her transfixed, and then his face melted like the Nazis in that um that Indiana Jones movie. Even Gennaro looked spellbound as he whispered, Wow, super model and eyes. Into the mo microphone, she has super model and eyes. She's she's the super shredder. <laughs> In the few remaining seconds, she placed her hand near her mouth, stuck out her tongue, and licked her thumb ever so slowly. Then she leaned down, glared into Bravo's eyes, and wiped each of his eyebrows with it. It felt good, vengeful, a vengeful eyebrow wipe. Chapter 38. Left, right, left. I can't turn left. I can't turn left. One final look at Model Land. Goodbye, Kamalani. She, Kamalani wasn't in the group. They didn't include Kamalani. She was like total bro to them. And a zipper pull that flamed crimson as if warning not to touch it. Oh, the evil zipper zip zap. Tuki yanked it open. Ouch. It was hot to the touch. Oh, that's like the home loan trap when it heats up the doorknob. <laughs> Kevin McAllister is waiting on the other side of the zip zap. It was pitch black inside the tunnel. Terrifying growling and wailing sounds echoed off its walls. This would have been really romantic for her getaway with Bravo. The tunnel surface was hot, burning through the girl's clothing and singeing Tuki's bare legs. It was burning their clothes. Bravo wanted this as for like the romantic getaway loss of her lip virginity? <laughs> where you go in a tunnel where it burns your clothes off? Tuki looked into the air and saw four fireballs shooting straight toward them. Oh, Bravo had some bad intel on that one. She looked down and saw water lapping at her neck. <laughs> she saw the water lapping at her neck. She didn't know she was in water until then. We made it, Dylan yelped. She splashed over to Tuki and gave her a huge hug. No one told you life was gonna be this way. Why didn't they turn old? Is it if you take the zip zap, you're fine? It's just if you cross the wall, there's a magic old spell. 
To Tuki's horror, she saw CL's familiar pouch in flying mode. It swooped ominously above them, dropping lower and lower with each rotation. She was coming after them! <laughs> CL's pouch in, in pursuit. The a pouch chase. You think, like, I mean, like, they can't, if she's gonna chase after them, they can't just go home, right? Like, cause they're immediately gonna know where, where they are. So you're just gonna be on the run forever from model land? Lizzie's eyes locked with Tuki, and she let out a joyful yet mournful yelp. <laughs> Both girls pointed to the sky, then made a motion as if checking their underarms for a scent, then did a deep curtsy. Oh, they're doing like the superstar? Well, she does the like, she does the underarm, like the hands, and then the, you know, rather than the. Superstar! 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 The Unicas watched them, cocking their heads, trying to make sense of the reunion. Obviously, she knows her. She's a friend. What's there to make sense of? You know, she was planning on this being, what, a trilogy? She's just gonna abandon Lizzie again once the opportunity arises, or... I guess I'll find out with the ending. I hope the ending is like The Sopranos. It just goes black. Passing spas, high-end hotels, jewelers, exclusive nightclubs, all kinds of things she used to dream about as a simple girl in Peppertown. She was but a simple girl in Peppertown. And now she's older and wiser. She was but a simple girl once. Tuki climbed aboard and gazed at Shiraz, who shrugged and shot the driver her best Kara 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 expression. Which made him break into a googly, I'll do anything you want smile. Oh, they're seducing the bus driver. It seemed they had learned something valuable at Model Land after all. Look pretty. CLs appeared on either side of the bus as well, keeping pace with the speeding vehicle. Oh, multiple CLs. I'm seeing double. Four CLs. As soon as the three CLs noticed the bus, a determined look settled over their identical faces and they sprinted after it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Bet Midler! The Labrian man sped down the alley toward the obelisks, hydroplaning on the th slick street. The bu it's like speed! Ahead of them stood Lizzie, frozen, staring at the oncoming bus! Oh no! Lizzie, stay right there! Oh, she's not in front of the bus, or she... What? Was she standing in front of the oncoming bus? <laughs> Chapter 39, Breathless Sister Friends. The bus lay on its side next to the obscure obelisks. Its windshield smashed, its tires flattened. This was unnecessary. Blood rose through the figure's thin shirt. Thwack, thwack. Oh my god, Tuki whispered. More, more gore and flagellating and... I'm sorry. She toured her shirt to get down to her bare flesh. She's hulking out. Yeah. The blood dripped down her back, pooling on the ground. You know what? I just don't care anymore. I don't really care why she's doing any of this. Like, I just want it to get to a point. What? Is, there t is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. With all my powers, I should have been able to save you, she screamed. <laughs> With all my powers combined. I am Captain Modeland! Tuki reared back, afraid, but CL's face was crumpled and extremely vulnerable. I'm imagining, imagining like one of those like exaggerated uh, SpongeBob, Ren and Stimpy pictures when they like make the faces like super detailed and it's her just like. Wee. So what happened that got you in so much trouble with the Belladonna? CL shut her eyes. Oh no, another long story. Being the guest of honor at parties thrown by royalty, worldwide televised p poetry slams, and autograph signings, and then they made a symphony based on my beauty. All of these stories, like, are so hashtag unrelatable. And I knew exactly where to go, to the divide, and there were moments I wasn't sure I'd get through it alive. But I found my sister friends, one by one. It was time people understood that Model Land's narrow beauty ideals are flawed and in need of a change. Well, that just sounds like they went and do it. Why were they there? That, was, that didn't have to do with beauty standards and everything to do with, like, going on a mountain full of, like, monsters and shit. So I quickly created this monument in my sister friend's honor and buried them here. The obelisks? She buried the bodies under the obelisks? This is a horror story, though. If Tyra wanted to write a horror story, why didn't she write a horror story? The Belladonna demanded they be taken down, but she has no jurisdiction over Metopia. You have no jurisdiction here, Belladonna! She's like some sort of, like, powerful sorceress wizard. 
I thought she was like maybe a deity of some sort or something. She has like these powers, but she has no jurisdiction over Metopia. I can't believe I actually got you to Model Land, and I can't believe I figured out a way to get the Belladonna to keep you here. I can't believe I got you, Agos, past the rules. It's the ultimate challenge. You guys are just dog-faced. I, I cannot believe it. What a genius I am! I pulled it off! The perfect crime! I'm sorry if I scared you. It was a combination of crazy and tough love. <laughs> it was a combination of crazy and tough love. <laughs> that's that's the Tyra way, isn't it? I don't think a lot of like crazy people say like it was a combination of crazy and tough love. Sometimes I'm just crazy. It was just a combo of crazy. And crazy and tough. Sometimes I'm crazy. Don't worry about it. I was just having a crazy spell. Like, yeah, I don't see anything appealing about going back to Monoland, to be honest. And you probably won't have it easy your whole life. I know you girls have struggled with all your baggage, but hell, we all do. You won't have it easy your whole life because you have two different colored eyes. I know I might sound crazy, and as you know, I kind of am. <laughs> and Tuki, don't you see how much you've changed? You've become this ass kicker in man attack. I don't see any positive changes here. Will you do it for me at least? Will you try? Do me a favor. Me, the person who broke you into this horrible place. Maybe I can let them rest in peace and let the wounds on my back heal too. Maybe I won't hurt myself if you do what I want you to do. Hmm? I think it's your responsibility to help me overcome my demons. There was a long silence. Owls hooted in the distance. Hoo -hoo! By the looks on their faces, she could tell they were thinking about exactly what she was, the positives of Model Land. All the wonderful things they'd experienced there. Nothing. She glanced at the obelisks again, then walked over to them and kneeled down. I love you, chicas. <laughs> she whispered, and I'll never forget. I love you, chicas. Hot queens. Her friends were just too ugly to live. They were too ugly, and they died for being ugly. So she's gonna turn beauty standards on its head. Justice for ugly people. Chapter 40, the 7-7 seven, seven Tournament! Oh, my poor dear darling. You thought it was over, didn't you? That the Unicus piled and I didn't think it was over. You threatened- uh, This is 569 fucking pages. I see a lot of book left. See a lot of book left. I didn't think it was over. Who is this narrator that they keep? She she used in the beginning of this and like jumping back and forth and then back to this like darling person. Who's the who is this? Who's the narrator? Tyra? Darling, you should be ashamed of yourself. There's so much more to the story to tattle tell you. And how dare you assume otherwise? I love being berated by by a book I'm reading. Might I suggest the next time you come across another vindictive, vile, venomous creature, you stop, drop, and roll around the idea that maybe the, shall I say, bitch did not spring out of her mother's birth canal that way. I'm learning a real lesson. We judge CL, aka old Tyra, too harshly, I think. You know, the one about stuck-up, straggly, strep-throated strumpets with stenchy, stupid styes under their espresso, cigar smoke, and egg salad sandwich-scented breaths. Why is it that bitter bitches have the worst halitosis? What is she on about? I don't care. Get to a point! Frantic 7-7 seven -seven competitors dressed in elaborate, otherworldly couture costumes and the most glittering, complex jewelry Tuki had ever seen, and we're gonna have it described in painstaking detail to us. What are the outfits and the jewelry, Tyra? Devin Rump, mayor of Metopia, trundled in with dignitaries from all of Metopia's quadrants. The dignitaries are all going to the 7-7 seven -seven celebration. The real you is far more special than the you who tries to be me. If I was insecure, I'd be changing into you every single day. If I was insecure like you, I'd be changing into you. The top of a muddy head appeared next, followed by two bulbous, demonic, cruddy eyes. Everyone screamed and took another step back. Two shoulders appeared next on the wall, then an abdomen and legs. We get it. This wasn't a legazard. It was... C -c -c Creamy? Tuki cried and promptly passed out. Oh, go, 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 go! Wait, it was creamy covered in... Shit. All right. Chapter 41, Stone to Bone and Flesh. The Belladonna statue's eyes began to blink. Her hands moved from her alluring pose. She arched her neck way down and gazed upon the filthy woman in the O. She then burst into song. No! Why are we being punished for Creamy's crimes? Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Bravo. He's starting to look so handsome and he goes, my job here's done. But you haven't done anything. Tuxedo Bravo! 
And then he licked his thumb and pantomimed, wiping Tukey's eyebrows. Stop with this nonsense. It's gross. Tukey's mouth fell open. How dare he do that, of all things? She made up her mind that she would never forgive him. Ever! He took the eyebrow thing. I will never forgive you. Never! I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you, bravo. More like persecution, Creamy muttered. Persimmon flinched slightly. I don't see this going well for them, to be honest. The rocky exterior rumbled as if stricken by a tiny self-contained earthquake. An enormous chunk of the shoulder and torso broke off and smashed into a hundred pieces in the ground. <laughs> gonna be like a little guy like the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, I'm the wizard. There was something inside the statue's stony exterior <laughs> interior. It's Mr. J! He was inside it all along. Ah! Finally, the entire statue had chipped away except for one large piece of stone over the face. I don't look stupid, right? You tell me if I'd look stupid. Hey guys, it's me, the Belladonna. Each and every girl on the planet has a chance to be one of the enlightened. Chapter 42. Les Trois Copines? Copa? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Les Trois... Les Trois... Ooh, all the Unica said it once. <laughs> Boo! The Belladonna answered like a seductive ghost. Boo! Like a seductive ghost. Boo! Boo! I'm a seductive ghost! Boo! <laughs> I'll bet my CL face money. My CL face money? Her face is on money. She's like, I'll bet my CL face money. That's what uh, George Washington would have said, you know. I bet my Washington face money. The Belladonna stared, or actually squinted. I believe smized is the word. If I am seeing you what I think I am, you are far from creamy. Clumpy is more like it. Or craggy. She called her clumpy. This is the ultimate insult. She'll never recover from that one. I can see why, why people live in fear. At least my soul isn't rotten, Creamy shot back. I don't know about that one, Creamy. You can't claim that. There's a rumor going around that the Belladonna's soul is as filthy as a truck stop urinal. Word has it that she traded it away. Oh my god, did she sell it to the devil? The brand new sparkling seats were filled to capacity with staff, bestosteros, and villains. And civilians, sorry. Well, maybe there's some villains in there. And Tukey noticed a skinny Intoxabella popping pills and offering some to the Intoxabella to her left. Why isn't she a cat, huh? I thought that's what happened when you when you sell pills, you become a cat. Is that Fiona from Catwalk Corridor? She wondered. It was. Oh, I see. She's a former cat. My bad. I feel like a real idiot now. The cavities, not there. But it appeared she'd be sent back soon. Maybe turning into a cat isn't really an effective form of rehab. Filing in through the side entrances of the stadium were dozens of acrobats and exotic jungle cats lending a circus-like atmosphere and then someone's gonna bow into a sword. Dylan sidled up next to Piper, lifted her train, and pulled aside her leotard, bearing her butt. Oh, she did no mooning. Is this the time for this? You're in front of the Belladonna and then like you think like someone probably is gonna get killed and you, you're like scared that something's gonna happen those friends that died or something. She wiggled it at the girls. This is for you ladies. Some boo big teak booty. <laughs> what if they could see them though? They were wrong and like, oh. But revenge is so sweet. By bringing Tukey here instead of Miracle it made you catch the pilgrim plague. And that tastes so good to me. But yuck, you survived the journey. Over some petty bitch fight between the Belladonna and Creamy, and then ah, she only got in as an uggo for revenge. Ah, ah, ah! I don't care. She whipped around and transferred all her aggression to the five fingers that still held tightly to Tuki's arm, squeezing so hard that Tuki let out a small pained eep, 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 eep. eep. If they don't care about killing people, why don't they just do it though? Why doesn't the Belladonna, the largest of the of the model land citizens, simply eat the others? Whatever had happened between them, she wanted to know about it. She deserved to know. It was time for the truth. She's still my boyfriend! They hardly seemed surprised as Creamy, the Belladonna, Persimmon, Ciel, Miracle, and Unicus tumbled in after Tukey. There's too many damn characters. Too damn many! Creamy stepped forward, her footsteps making dirty smudges on the gleaming white floor. 
And then Creamy jumped into the circle, making more dust rise off her body in a thick black cloud. She's Pigpen! That's the Queen Belladonna, CL whispered as though reading Tukey's thoughts. Our Belladonna's mama. I think they're from a long line of royal intoxabellas or something. Oh, such lore. Lada was Creamy, her mother, and Creamy the Belladonna and Persimmon had once been best friends on their way to becoming intoxabellas at Monoland. Are they, are they acting like that's a revelation? Like we could tell that's who it was. That's stupid. Chapter 43. Porcelain living dolls. CL sniffed with disdain. Is this how you knew Miracle was going to get chosen? Daughters of Intoxabellas had almost a 100% chance of getting into Model Land, after all, higher than the chances of Smize Finders. Yeah, but Tukey's also her daughter, so... The cardinal rule at Model Land is that a Bella cannot date a civilian. CL rubbed her palms together. Why didn't they tell them? Why didn't they tell them that? They've been there for forever now. And have I ever told you that you have the voice of an angel? It's even more beautiful than that breathtaking face of yours. That's why I love to sing for you. Oh, is that why she sings for a million fucking years? She raised the clutch higher now, hiding their passionate kiss. Mwah! Slumped into the toilet. To <sighs> more toilet scenes. Do we need multiple toilet barf scenes? We're gonna make it fashion. After a moment, there was a large splash in the porcelain. Suddenly, a small, piercing cry rang out. Alright, I just- I just read ahead about... to what happens. God. Did we need this? I don't even know- does this need a warning? I don't know what to- I don't know! But it wasn't the sickened cry of a young woman wrecked from tainted food, it was the cry of a tiny baby emerging into the world. Was this necessary? Is this for teens? Who is this for? Who is this book written for? Toilet baby. Toilet baby. There's toilet baby. Tyra toilet baby. God. What kind- Does, does anyone take joy in this? Did any, was anyone entertained by this? Like they were- They read this scene and they're like, Oh man, what? I'm just so invested so invested in the belladonna as a baby. It had the perfect face of an angel. Its skin, the color of a fluffy spring lamb, was covered with streaks of blood. <laughs> the face of an angel. Renesme! <laughs> oh my god, help me. What do I do? I don't like reading this. I don't like reading this at all. I don't like do I don't like reading this in these silly voices too. I feel like a dick. I just thought I was sick. We don't get periods here, so how do you did you know? I didn't even show. I don't, I don't like it. Maybe that's why you don't take their periods away. All of this sounds like just nonsense. Persimmon, your time at Model Land is now officially over. I'm sending you back to where you came from right now. Oh! Persimmon, that's how she became a mannequin. A question nobody asked. You could have begged your mother to spare her. And what did you do? Thought only of yourself. Percy could have left Model Land forever and been free and kept her looks. Her fate was her choice. I had no choice. A third voice rang out. These are all stupid voices that I picked. You got the Crypt Keeper, Daisy Duke, fucking alien, per Dr. Evil. Spit flew out of her mouth as she spoke, but fashion. Spit, but fashion. The boyfriend stared into the basket at a tiny creature inside, slowly shaking his head. And that creature was the Grinch. Then gracefully he swooped down as though he was about to do a handstand and took the baby in his arms. He sweeped as if he was going to do a handstand. <laughs> and baby. Strange feeling came over. <laughs> Guys, I just read a little bit ahead. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about this twist. Genuinely did not expect it. Get ready for this, folks. The Belladonna's boyfriend, the father of her child, wasn't Chris Krem Crobat. He was Wingtip! It was Wingtip, guys, it was Wingtip! It was Wingtip! Ba 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 ba! Good wise old Wingtip! Coming back in! <laughs> I genuinely, I didn't expect the return of Wingtip. This is very, very good. I'm feeling pretty good. I was feeling pretty bad about this reading. When we were getting to the toilet baby stuff. I don't really like the toilet baby stuff. But then we got Wingtip and they started like turning it around. 
This like whirlwind of emotions. Wingtip's toilet baby. <laughs> this is I didn't with that, the girl scaled the wall and jumped over the, into the diabolical divide. Cremolata's cheeks shriveled like a raisin. She looked, looked much more like the creamy Tukey knew. Hiked up the bottom of her skirt to show some extra leg and wait. Oh, she's gonna try and seduce. She's gonna have like the old face and be like, mm, hey, big boy. Yes, I'm in the kitchen. She said in a disguised high pitch. So she's trying to sound like the Belladonna. So, yes, I'm in the kitchen. Can he not tell the difference? Is he like old face blind or something? rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! You heard, LaDonna, the love of your life. The child does not belong to you anymore. Can this be held, like, legally? Like, is Model Land beyond, like, the laws of the land? Or do they, like, lay out the laws of the land? Like, can you, can they really enforce this? I jumped him. I have no idea how he could resist me, but he did. He was fighting me off the whole time. But, Cremolata, you're my best friend. I don't think they liked each other that much to be honest. Creamy was like murdering a lot of people so I don't really it doesn't really make me see her in any different kind of light. Give her back to me. Give me my CL. Oh ba 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 How'd the queen say like you can't see her again if she did see her again and then she was called CL anyway so like I'm not hard to find her. This is really- this is like the twist that is the least interesting, I think. She had her for two seconds and named her C Squiggly Line L. Chapter 44, Wicked Couture! Oh, this is like a three-page chapter? Four pages. Creamy and the Belladonna huddled together for a moment as though locked in an intimate embrace, but then Tuki saw a sharp, shiny metal object piercing her mother's gut and protruding to her back. <laughs> the two women were skewered together with a spike for the Belladonna's dress. <laughs> The Belladonna's dress somehow is skewered through the... Did it skewer both of them? It just screwed... It skewered her and, and put them together? <laughs> what? Why? Why, though? Why? That means Tuki, like, has... Both of Tuki's parents have been impaled. <laughs> that's... That's... That's a higher average than most families, I would say. <laughs> Oh, but mommy, she whispered, cradling the woman's head in her hands. The, I don't... This is fucked up. Blood pulsed from her abdomen in time with the beat of her heart. <laughs> Creamy may not have been the best mom in the world, but she was all Tukey had. Regenerate! Tukey, <coughs> get me my bellissima. Be back on your feet in no time. <laughs> Chapter 45, La Camera Bruta. Brada? Brada. La Camera Brada. The Brada. And then he eyed the grisly scene. Boom. Uh oh, uh -oh SpaghettiOs. The 7 7 tournament is postponed. The upper class Bellas all screamed. Ah! Hospitals from Terrabasa Nova to Tulip were flooded with victims who'd fainted from the hideous blow. Ugh, get a life, everyone. Think about how you'd feel, darling. I would not give a shit. Ah! Anti-repugnancy spritz, Persimmon explained, to make sure you don't experience the ugly room's effects. They're just coming up with, like, 60s Batman gadgets now. Anti-repugnancy spritz. <laughs> Get me the shark repellent! The bat shark repellent! When CL opened her eyes, she looked guilty, fragile, and naive instead of confident and strong. She turned to go after Persimmon, but stopped when she heard Tukey's voice. So... So Tyra's created two self-insert characters that are just this, like, persecuted, secretly nice, sweet, beautiful, nicest, beautiful, most talented people in the world chosen ones. Two of them? She had entrails for hair, a twisted tree root for a nose, and millipedes for eyelashes. Metal clamps held her eyes open, making blinking impossible. A saline stream dripped into her eyes from a clear bag above. What are we doing? doing Tyra it's like this this book defies you to read it 
It's like, oh, do you feel good about that? Well, here's something that's going to make you question all of your life choices. The Belladonna's face reminded her of a ghastlier version of her own at THBC. Oh, it's all about you again, isn't it? Next to her, Creamy, also dressed in an ugly room jumpsuit. Oh, so she's fine. She got over that whole impaling thing. It almost, it's, oh, it makes the whole thing seem kind of pointless. A bag was attached to her gut, draining blood. I don't know if you want to drain her blood. But if your mom survives, Tuki, she'll probably remain in the ugly room for a long time. Possibly a life sentence. Oh, it's their jail. They have a jail, but they have no jurisdiction in other places, I guess. And Metopia. Tuki touched her mother's foot. It was ice cold. Ew! Why'd you touch her foot? Such a weird place to touch someone. All I've ever wanted is for you to love me back. Creamy didn't answer. Typical Creamy. All Tuki heard was the sucking sounds of her mother's blood in tubes. <laughs> Tuki glanced at CL, who was slumped over, whispering her own plaintive pent-up feelings to the Belladonna as turned back. She's like, this is my heartwarming moment, not yours. I'm going to talk over you with my heartwarming moment. CL dueling heartwarmings. Why didn't you ever think I was special, Tuki said. CL wiped the tears from her cheeks and stared at the Belladonna. Oh, do you mind? I'm having my moment. The Belladonna erupted into violent sobs. <laughs> violent. When I had you, I looked into your gray eyes and the first thing I saw, what I said was, I see love. And CL, every time I see you, even right now, I see love. That's how I named you, CL. See love. Awful. <laughs> CL stands for see love. I see love. <laughs> love. I bring you love. It's bringing love. Don't let it get away. Break its legs. Solo. <laughs> no meme alone. Cause I'm alone. <laughs> see love. See love. <laughs> <laughs> it's I can't I'm not even like registering the stupidity anymore I'm just like like what what do I do with this information seal then collapsed her head into her mother's lap and the belladonna leaned forward embracing her daughter you can't just say like I named you sea love in a stupid way and then everything's fine <sighs> shut up crazy eyes Nar screamed, oh, again with the crazy eyes. Surely you can come up with, like, more uh, justified insults at this point. For once, the eyes of the board members were wide open. Their faces were alert, alert, interested. Finally, Carrot Top and the rest of the board. Guru Applause's head, head hand was chewing one of its own fingernails. How does that even work? Like, <laughs> without a word, Nars dragged CL to a contraption and slammed her head into what looked like a crystal guillotine. Tuki's scalp prickled. What an odd reaction to seeing someone about to be executed. Scalp? Her scalp prickled. Is guillotine, does it sound stupid when someone like, speaking normal English says it? Or is it like guillotine, guillotine? Let's, let's call the whole thing off. The diamond blade glimmered in the light, blinding Tuki, just like her mother's mirror had blinded Chris Crumb Crobat on the tightrope many years before. Remember when her dad impaled himself on a sword? Remember that? Red liquid gushed from CL's neck, covering her body. And then an object appeared on CL's head, a fashionable off-kilter crown. The red liquid transformed into fabric, a stately red damask cape? All at once, the other board members began to applaud to the new Belladonna. That's how they... Why does everything have to be fucked up? Why? There's no... It's so unnecessary. It doesn't have to be fucked up. It doesn't have to be fucked up. They're, they're like pranking. Oh, that's typical board. That's typical actions of the board, right? They just like they're pranking. That is no way to speak to the newly crowned Belladonna. Already drunk with power. Is that a yes? The other board members said in unison. CL nodded. I suppose it is, she said, smirking at Nars. Smirk! Yes, Tuki screamed, forgetting she was in hiding. I don't care about my mom dying. Yeah. So herself insert crowns herself queen of the whole damn place. 
Oh my god, CL has turned into a demon again. Where can I run? Tuki thought, panicked. Everyone just immediately like, well, bye. The guards dropped Tuki's arms and CL said, Psych! Tuki, I was totally kidding. Aw, pranksters! And then CL wrapped Tuki in a big hug. Yeah. Cracked her bones. I thought you were going to kill me. <laughs> I always think they're going to kill each other. And you, if you ever have a problem with treating Tuki with the respect she deserves, you can kiss my big fat princess Belladonna ass. <laughs> If there was any doubt that CL is adult Tyra self-insert, so Tuki is the 16-year-old self, and we know that for sure because she said that. Tuki's inspired by me and my teen self. If there was any doubt that CL is adult Tyra, you can kiss my big fat ass was something that she said on her talk show. Kiss my fat ass! She even named one of her makeup things after it. Kiss my fat lash. Like she's, she's taking it back, you know? So you're taking it back. And so now CL's taking it back. Good God. Double Tyra's, what's it mean? He fell to his knees, puckered his lips and kissed Tuki's shoes, which were still soiled with ugly room crud. And Tuki had to admit, felt pretty damn good. Who are we rooting for? We're not rooting for fucking anyone. Kiss my fat ass! I got my, uh, my smize on. I don't normally wear this much eye makeup. And it feels, it feels clumpy. I probably did it wrong. Chapter 47, La Lengua. Was CL truly the new Princess Belladonna? I didn't even know they were supposed to be royalty till last chapter. I didn't realize there was a monarchy going on. Tuki blinked hard. Her eyebrows arched. Then Sarpessa stepped forward and stuck her finger in Tuki's face. And what was all that in the Orb Arena about my Theophilus? Uh, just Tuki being creepy about your boyfriend who has no romantic interest in her. And in a split second, all three boys stripped off their uniform shirts, revealing tan mahogany and golden skin and sharply defined pectoral and abdominal muscles. Oh no. And then she noticed there was something written on their chests in goopy red paint. Tuki, Webb's chest said. I'm so, Alexander said, and Neil said sorry. They treat apologies like a football game. Like they paint on their chests. I, I'm so sorry. And like, yeah, apologies. Go Bulls. The Bears. The Bears are the ones, right? I think the Bulls are, there's probably a football Bulls too. She was seething. Was this some kind of joke? She even takes this in the wrong way. Like, she's the most touchy person in the world. More words in the same red script are scrawled ac across their broad back muscles. It was never a bet. All right, dude. This is pathetic. You know, we, like, we only have so many pages left. We have 23 pages left, and a lot of those are some sort of epilogue. So, like, what even... What do you mean it's gonna happen? What's left? From behind, someone grabbed Tuki's shoulder and she turned to find... Bravo! In a perfectly fitted velvet tuxedo! Tuki, will you take this rose? I hope that it's like a ridiculous, like... Like a... Like a Dumb and Dumber tuxedo. There was a long silence. Finally, Bravo met her eyes. Oh no, there's a long section. He's gonna talk forever. The architecture suddenly wasn't enough for me to want to stay here without you. The architecture wasn't enough. Then he chuckled lightly. <laughs> I wanted to write, Tuki, you're the most amazing girl I've ever laid eyes on. I can't decide which to love more, your green eye or your brown eye. <laughs> but there wasn't enough room on everyone's chests. Believe me, we try. <laughs> enough with the eyes. She's the most self-conscious person about such a non-issue. No one cares. True architecture was the friends we met along the way. All at once it made sense. The tuxedo, the writing on the chest. What's going on here? The dress, the candles, the music. They stopped at a garden Tuki had never seen before, right on the border between Model Land and Bestosterone. <laughs> if you step between the border of, of Model Land and Bestosterone, are you in two countries at once? It was filled with the most beautiful golden yellow fabric flower she'd ever seen. And they went on for a mile. As soon as I saw you'd come back, me and my boys got on the job. That's that's an unauthorized planting going on there. Unauthorized landscaping. I don't think uh, the Belladonna would have approved of that, but I guess CL would. There was a change in regime 
between when he started and in this moment. Then he grabbed Tuki's hands and began to sing a strange little tune slightly off key. She couldn't resist another damn song. Oh, Tuki, 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 I love you more than architecture and Loro's oatmeal cookies. <laughs> Went to the fence cause my heart was failing The purse said no bravo Daily crimps got you pull sailing That is the worst fucking thing I've ever heard in my life But you know it's from the heart he's for real If he says he, he loves her more than architecture he He's a real one <laughs> Oh this is the worst This sucks God, there's more song! This is what you wanted. You deserve to get what you want. <laughs> I'm gonna sing for you, listen! But you should be pissed at me, Tuki said, because I hit you, because I left from our zip zap, because of Theophilus? This question mark? Did that do anything for you? Oh, Tuki, I never wagered your lip. Nuki, no! 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 Nuki, I did it for the lip, Nuki! L Lip Nookie! I never thought I would read anything more hideous than Lip Virginity. And, and Tyra throws out Lip Nookie, and I'm supposed to. How am I supposed to process this? I'm supposed to live my life like nothing ever happened? I can't. I just can't go on from this. Lord, something's tired of it again. You've taught me about loving and giving. I was a rookie. You're so pure and sweet. Now I'm hooky on Tuki. God, why? It's like she. You know, I, all right. I feel like I feel like I've I've dunked a lot on Tyra's Model Land theme song. But now I feel like it's pretty on brand for the rest of this book, as in every song in this is the worst song ever written. And I imagine if these were ever sung in the way they were intended, I, I am taking some artistic license, they would sound like you're being stabbed in the ear repeatedly. Bravo then did a spin and tried to drop down in a half split, but almost fell over. <laughs> yeah. Bring! Tuki covered her eyes. Stop it, she said bashfully. Oh, please. But in truth, she kind of liked this. A lot. Uh, you would. This is all for a kiss. This is all just leading up to a kiss. Just get the fuck over it. It ain't that big a deal. Just shut up. We have 569 pages to get to your stupid fucking first kiss? Idiot. Your special first, Bravo went on. He moved an inch closer and cradled her face in his hands. Your only first! <laughs> That's so creepy. Your only first. I didn't add that, that's what he said. That's so creepy. How privileged I would be if you said yes, Bravo whispered, his lips puckered just so. <coughs> Will you? <coughs> Will you? <coughs> In the distance, a couple of birds sang to one another. <coughs> that's what birds sound like. <coughs> oh. She could feel his breath on her face. <sighs> but wait, Bravo leaned back, staring at her. I have a story for you, just like the story you told me. But first, a story. <laughs> Thank you. Let's prolong this forever. Let's feel ourselves aging into creamy delacremes. Nobody saw her, ever. She would lie on the floor of her school. Dude, enough of this. We know. God. Tukalata wanted love, she went on. She wanted affection. Tukalata want love. And how does the story end? Bravo said, squeezing her hand. Hint, hint. And then Bravo kissed her forehead, Mwah! and then her cheeks, Mwah! Mwah! and then her nose. She, he sucked on her earlobe, sending a jolt of warmth all over her body, <laughs> followed by an intense feeling of pleasure she'd never experienced before. Wait, shouldn't you kiss on the lips before you get to the earlobe sucking? I'm just saying. And then at the same time, they both licked their own thumbs and smoothed the other's eyebrows. You do us 
pre-kiss eyebrow licking. She heard the sound of a whipped cream can shaking and instinctively opened her mouth. She then heard Bravo squirt some some cream into his own mouth. His lips parted and she felt something thick and slimy inside of her mouth. His tongue! Ew! 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 She pulled away, wide-eyed. Uh, I don't like kissing that way. <laughs> what, what are we supposed to feel about any of this? <laughs> uh, my first kiss sucked. Don't do that. <laughs> Bravo looks surprised. But you've never kissed before. You'll get used to it. We can go as slow as you want, Tuki. You will set our pace. Always. But I will be your only first kiss! Epilogue! Do you see Tuki de la Creme up there? Do you see Tyra Banks? Do you see her? This next thing says our tale ends on, but, but there's still 15 pages left. I know this for a fact. She looked down at the expanse of Metopia's four distinct quadrants surrounding the mountain and prayed that Lizzie was still down there, still alive. Eh, whatever. Then she ran her hand over the wide- we'll never know. Then she ran her hand over the wide stretch of skin above her eyebrows. Her forehead. Get away from me, you bitey scratchy things! Creamy! A ditzy voice whined, so she gets to stay. <laughs> oh, oh, she- she's a cat? Did Mir Miracle get turned into a cat? <laughs> My sister, the cat. <laughs> three cheers, three cheers, three cheers. Thank you, my dears. I bet that would have been a great plot thread in the next Model Land book. It's so sad we won't see it. Tuki knew this new statue would be of CL, Princess Belladonna of Model Land. No one's above anyone else. I'm going to shatter the standards of beauty. Oh, a statue of me? Well, yes, go ahead then. This year was easy? Tuki sputtered in disbelief. Yes, Tyra comforts Tyra. Older Tyra comforts younger Tyra. Don't get me wrong, there's a new 777 sheriff in town. <laughs> there's a new 777 sheriff in town. I'm a do-thing-CL style, minus the crazy and spooky parts. I'm not crazy anymore. <laughs> I'm royalty. <laughs> Doesn't take a lot to wow them when they don't expect much from you. You've got to go- <laughs> Have low expectations. Make people think you're a piece of shit. Someone else told me that exact, exact same thing once, she whispered, remembering wingtip's uplifting words from a year ago. Wise old wingtip. It made sense that C.L. had nearly echoed him. Wingtip, Ray Fay, was her father, after all. You inherit phrases, despite never meeting your parent. Tuki breathed in, wanting to tell C.L. something about her dad, that he, that he was warm and tender, that he would have cared for her dearly, and that maybe he descended into melancholy because he'd lost her forever. You know you could find him now, right? They know where he is. They know exactly where he- T Tuki knows where he goes every day! Nah, girl. Been there, done that. Outside the pouch. <laughs> she- she graduated to outside the pouch. Y'all remember when you got old enough to fly outside the pouch? That was the last great milestone, isn't it? You dropped something after man attack. Thought you'd like it back. CL placed her hands over Tuki's face. She dropped her face? The smize! This time she recognized the energy that pulsed through her, and just like before, power zipped through her veins. Ha! <sighs> you're the power! Unlimited power! She felt tantalizing, luminescent, invisible. I invincible, sorry. Ooh! Freudian slip. Now climb on my back, CL instructed, like Yoda. Yeah. Every night as I lie in my lumiereless bed, I wonder how many other girls are like me out there around the world. Maybe, like me, you're fu- you, we are all Tuki. We are all Tuki inside. I'm Tuki. I'm Tuki. I'm Tuki. I'm Tuki. And I'm Tuki. Maybe, like me, your father abandoned you. Or perhaps you never even knew him. Tyra thinks this is the big inspirational moment. For all the kids reading who loved all of the gore and toilet babies and periods and shit. Maybe you hurt yourself and want to stop but don't know how. She didn't give any sort of conclu- It was just like, either become royalty or run away. That's how you, sol you solve self-harming. Maybe people hurl angry, hurtful words at you, making you want to curl up and disappear. Maybe it's Maybelline. I know what you are going through. Tyra knows what you're going through. I want to dedicate my struggle and all my time at Model Land to you. I dedicate this to you, reader. Hashtag humble. Take all of your pain, take all of the hurt you're feeling and your bad memories and your darkest thoughts and send it out to the universe. To me. Send your dark thoughts to me. I will feed on it. I'll be your vessel. I'll carry all of your hurt inside me so that you can be free. For I am the Lord Tyra Christ. When I feel weak, scared, or like I want to give up, I need you to send your strength and power to me on this mountain. <laughs> 
Clap if you believe in Tukis. Clap. <laughs> Tyrus the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> Tuki and CL swept through the sky, circling within the model and borders outside the pouch. She gets to fly outside of the Capri Sun. A black hole opened up as their bodies approached. Just Tuki and CL entered, the hole magically seamlessly swallowed them up, and the two of them disappeared. It's about your kids, Marty! Mario, Luigi, you're not gonna believe this! We're not- we'll never know what happened! We'll never know! We'll never know! They're dead! Yeah, they died. They died. The end. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. She goes on for five pages of acknowledgements. The idea for Model Land came to me when I was in the car on the FDR drive in New York City. The idea came to me when I read Harry Potter and wanted to do my own version and have a young adult novel series made into a movie slash franchise. From a scrap of paper, Madeline went to paper notebooks that I could write story beats in while sitting by the Hudson River. So thank you, Hudson. Even if your water is not as blue as I would like it to be. Ah, oh, dick. Dunk on the Hudson River and the cafe at the Guggenheim Museum and Andes, Andes Fifth Avenue, your hotel common areas and the shop. We don't need this, Tyra. <laughs> She's just name dropping cafes now. We had to hear all the stuff about the fake Tyras and now we have to hear all the stuff about the real Tyra. Can't wait for the slumber party when I start Model Land 2. <laughs> oh, I can't forget to thank my mom and John's during dining room tables. My mom and John's dining room, dining room tables? Oh, she's just thanking the tables, not them. <laughs> Terranea Resorts, you help produce a marvelous outline for Model Land. This is the real rags to riches story of Tyra Banks. Speaking of the shore, much love to the Pacific Ocean. Lake Como, thank you for providing me with your beautiful landscape. She spends a lot of time thinking places. <laughs> she thanked the beach for not complaining about the extension cord. Not the people. <laughs> and for inspiring the creation of Abigail Good? Do I, did she see a hairy person at Lake Como? As I gazed over your water, she popped into my mind. Hair? Water? Not sure what the connection is, but thanks anyway! <laughs> you could have you not told us that, Tyra. It didn't hurt that George Clooney lived a few doors down. Did, that, did George Clooney inspire Abigail Good, or is this just... She's just like, thanks for... George Clooney living there? <laughs> what is this? Did not thank George Clooney though. Oh, here's some more hashtag relatable. Morocco. It was a real treat for me to read a section of Model Land for half an hour to children who didn't speak English. <laughs> what, did, what did these kids think? She read a section of Model Land for half an hour to non-English speaking children that just sat there like, I don't know. I don't know. Did it sound better? How did, did she arrange this? Did they want- no one wanted this. What is going on? What are you, what are you doing? This is- her real life is as insane as this book. I thought that if I could hold their attention that long, maybe my book had a chance of success. Shukran. What? No, that's nothing. They were probably like, look at this crazy American woman. Like, all right, something to do. <laughs> what? Greece. I polished my baby on your soil. What? Hitting the send button while staring at Crete waves was not easy. It was not easy to send my book from Crete, but somehow I managed it because I knew the people needed the inspiration. The majority of my time writing Model Land was spent in a library. A yes, Tyra too used a library. I can't believe the bibliotecas where I spent so much time working on Model Land will now house it. Now, did she go to? B bibliotecas uh, in, in Mexico, in Spain, or does she just think it sounds fancy if she says bibliotecas? Just say it in Spanish. Because she she pretends she knows 15 languages. She, she, she knows two languages, precisely English and, uh, and Smize. So with much humility, I thank the library. With much humility, I thank the libraries. And sorry for eating maple nut fudge, not chocolate, under the table. That Belladonna songwriting worked up my appetite, and the fudge factory is right in your building. Why would she poly- what? I don't know why that deserved an apology. She just wanted to tell us she ate 
fudge? Cinemagic XM Satellite Radio. Did anyone she thanked read this other than her mom? I don't think John- I'm gonna- I know nothing about John. John did not read this. <laughs> Thank you to Harvard Business School and my market- She still pretends she's a Harvard graduate. She went to- a bit, she took business courses over like a few weeks. My leadership prof, thanks for suggesting I give the Unicas richer, more vulnerable backstory. She talked to Harvard professors. What are your tips on the Unicas? What do you think about the smizing? Columbia University, I cheated on Harvard with you and used your grand stairway. Shut up with your Harvard. Ken Mock, my dear partner on Top Model. Finally, you can visit Model Land and not just in your sleepy awake dreams. He never read this. Thank you for showing me that once the book is released into the world, it's no longer mine, that the readers own it. No, Tyra, you can have it. Stephen King. She thanks Stephen King. Stephen King, it feels so good to even type your name, especially because people will assume we are friends. I want to thank you for writing on writing. She said the quiet part out loud. Stephen King did not read Model Land, Tyra. He has no idea you thanked him. I may have failed when it comes to your advice that no one should use too many adverbs and adjectives, but Model Land is so splendiferously, kaleidoscopically, out of this world colorful, I couldn't help myself. Please forgive me. Never forgiven, never forgotten, Tyra. Stephen King will hold this grudge to his grave. You miraculously managed my insane life, allowing me to focus on the completion of Model Land. Crotches? Winky face? What? E. Crotches. Winky face. Thanks for taking my first thousand page manuscript. <laughs> Was her first manuscript really a thousand pages? Is, I hope this is hyperbole. If she wrote fucking a thousand pages about this book, someone had to read this. That's like a lifetime. I don't believe there was an editor, but that she she says there was. You know why it ended up like this? Because she had to she had to put one thousand pages condensed into five hundred sixty nine. That's why there was all these like these oopsies. Who wants to- who wants any of that? Who wants to dig through that? How the heck do you know how to do that and not sacrifice the story? Because you had- what story? What are you talking about? There was not- it was probably just a bunch of describing outfits and shit. To you, the person reading this book. Oh, please don't, Tyra. No. And that, my friends, is Model Land. <laughs> Holy shit! What I'm walking away feeling about this is this is what happens when you don't have people to tell you no. Look, I I will admit this is probably a fix from the thousand page manuscript that originally came from this, but I, that doesn't make it good. I don't think Tyra really budged on a lot of stuff. Other than they probably said, like, feasibly you cannot print this with a thousand pages. That's fucking ridiculous. I don't know what the audience is supposed to be other than Tyra Banks. It's like, it's overly violent and yet, like, juvenile at the same time. So, like, it's like, who is this shooting for? It's kind of a fascinating study in, like, what... What not to do. <laughs> with a novel. <laughs> you can see like where she pulled inspiration from like other things like it's a little bit derivative but then it goes into like things where it's clearly just from like her insane mind and a lot of it's just like what Tyra Banks is into. I mean there's a lot of pointlessness. A lot of stuff like nothing really much happened. It's a fascinating study into uh into Tyra Banks um, mindset, I think. <laughs> I don't think this is a world a lot of people jumped into. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure they're, like, Model Land fans, per se? Maybe there are some aspiring models who read this, but, like, it's really hard to relate to any of this. And, um, it's, it's pretty telling. The, uh, acknowledgements in the back, like, how hashtag relatable she thinks it sounds. Yeah, I do recommend checking it out. It's insane. The formatting is bizarre. Um, a lot of things I've never seen in books, for good reason. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever read a book like this again. This is insane.
good stuff. <laughs> but thank you mostly to my apartment. Ah, uh, the many hours I spent sitting here. Reading Model Land. Oh, the things that you've done. Thank you for putting up with my perfectionist self. Oh. Thank you to my cat. Listening to all of you. Good night, hot queens. May the Tyra be with you. Um, we are all too key. Uh, if you believe in her, just send out all of that energy to her on the mountain. She can't do it without you.